Hello, and welcome to the 108th episode of the Destiny Community Podcast. That there was a pause for dramatic effect, and this one is too. What is even happening right now? Did you get the correct number on the podcast? (laughs) Yeah. After 108 episodes, you finally got it right. Yeah. Did you recently (laughs) have Do you see how much I was pausing? (laughs) You see how much that was pausing? That That was validation in the brain. Yeah, that took way too much. I saw that it's like an overweight hamster trying to turn over the wheel. I saw it. <laughs> I'm I saw go, it. That's a visual. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> overweight hamster. He's like, <laughs> and like belly flops and like gets yeah. back up. <laughs> the Holt is left. It's for not how hard you listeners. fall. It's how you yeah. get back up again. Yeah, you're right. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So while Holtz is left, we are joined <laughs> with Aztec Cross. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you, guys. Glad to be on here. So we have had an outpouring. You have a virtual army as your uh, audience, your fan base has yep, hit yep. me up and even threatened <laughs> to 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 come to my house and force me to watch your videos what you should be on the show like literally minions have been awesome. telling me I to, love them. to bring you on the show and, yeah they're probably all titans too <laughs> So, Every one uh, of them. You've got the entire Titan community <laughs> yep, watching yep. your your videos. Yeah, that's amazing. Yep, that's right. the uh, the demographic there. So, which well, I, I like the hunters and warlocks too. You know, they're all views, right? They're they're sure, all sure. there too. Yeah, so, but, but I think I yeah. think they're all watching to find out what the optimal setup for Titans is, so that they can possibly kill them better in mm. in Crucible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know that that's uh, that's pretty much the the case. Um, Hunters especially, you know, which they're always the ones that complain the most. But I mean, can confirm is what it is. Can confirm. Yeah, I I get caught with a lot of complaining myself. I'm (laughs) saying for me, you're a warlock, Tefty. Excuse (laughs) what? What? Ever since you, I don't think we're ever had an insult like that on this show. I am (laughs) offended. We're trying to keep it civil for the kids. Watch, unbelievable, calling me a filthy (laughs) warlock. But then he fell in love with warlock. Uh, you know who doesn't like eating a nade and suddenly have your health back? I mean, <laughs> I mean, you can. It's like a, it's like a summer fling, right, Tefty? Exactly. You can you know, go on like, vacation and meet a cute girl, and you're like, hey, you're you're awesome, right? But it only makes sense for the it's, vacation. You no, know, Pope, it's like actually oh, Lord, visiting right. a place. It makes it's horses. like actually you visiting a place. You're like, man, Vegas is really fun for the first night. Right. The second day, I'm like, I am full of nades, and I don't need any more health. <laughs> I got to get the hell out of here, and I feel right. disgusting. There was a lot of iodine in that shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> so, Aztec, you uh, are cross. I'm sorry. So, first of all, can we can we hear about how you uh, how did you come up with the name Aztec Cross? Like, what's what's the story behind that? Um, is there oh. a secret love interest that that sparked the name? Oh yeah. Well, actually, I used to be. Back in my Xbox days, Icy Hot 101. Mm, um, nice. Yeah, like yeah. That. That, that was Icy the old gamer tag. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was actually my friend's gamer tag. Wait, wait, so wait. We, before we go, at Icy Hot 101. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I really, it just sounded cool. Were you teaching I, people how to apply Icy Hot correctly? Yeah. And, and a one on one. Yeah. This is a one on one of which I, I show you how to apply it. But no, it was it was my friend's gamer tag, and okay. I essentially stole it from him and just spelled it differently, right? And so we got into this. I mean, we're we're like freshmen in college fighting over a gamer tag. Uh, <laughs> so finally, I was like, "Fine, dude. You know what? It was originally your name. I'll come up with my own gamer tag." And so uh, I came up with Astrocross, which is actually my dad's uh, first construction company, uh, which is Aztec Construction, and then uh, Cross. Is his name Ross? No, his, his, his name is not Ross either. <laughs> we, we're very confused. There is nothing to do with Ross. Yeah, no, no. Okay. My name is really not Ross. Like friends. So, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, that's where, where that name came from. Fair enough. Very it cool. Just stuck since. It stuck. And so um, when you got into video games, Vigi games, as we like to call it here, yep. um, did you 
Did you know content creation was in your future or is this, uh, this is something that came about through? No, I, uh, you know, I got into it and I, I didn't even know streaming or YouTube was a thing. Like I would watch YouTubers, but I was like, you know, I don't really know where these guys come from. How are they even getting started? And here in Louisiana, like the where I live at, we didn't even have good internet. So like, even if I wanted to do those things, there's just no way. And then, I don't know, I'd say about 2010, 2011, we finally got decent internet. And then um, I finally got into trying out content creation. It was really destiny that spurred me into that direction. Um, so you talked about watching content creators. Who was somebody that you enjoyed watching when you first got started? Um, really, for, for Destiny, I really got hung up on Planet Destiny. I would watch the, everything, everything those guys did. You guys, pretty much, as I was going into work. Um, and and I, I would watch it on the way back home, too. Um, and then, of course, I think around that time, Fruit was getting started as well. And he, he had like a, a really refreshing way of re reviewing things. Mm -hmm. um, and so that kind of what, what spurred me in that direction. And I was also doing some Sherpa on the side, um, but it was for PVE. I was actually a PVE player first. And so I played like Vault a bunch and would join up with people and help them out. And that was what I did pretty much every single day until I started the channel. Nice. There's something that I noticed when I was watching your videos is that you seem to have like, so, when I watch Holtzman's um, weapon reviews, he has a he has some personal use advice in there, and he gets into some of the detail oriented aspects of the the weapon and number counts, and it sort of builds this picture of the gun in your mind, and you have an understanding of it. It feels like you have that same ability, but obviously in your own um, style. Yeah, I pulled but a you... lot of that from from Holtz. Um, also pulled. Mm -hmm. I dropped my my intro. I used to have an intro for my videos. Um, and then I dropped it because I loved M Tash's way of just diving into his videos. Like he he wouldn't even have a five or six second intro. Uh, and so he would just jump right into it. And so, you know, yeah, that's kinda kinda how I do it. I've I've pulled a little bit from from everyone and I definitely mm -hmm. keep up with everything that everyone does. Nice. Um, because they, they are very valuable in this community. So your 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 reviews, your build, rev I don't know if they're reviews, but your build suggestions are some of my favorite of your videos. It seems to me like your OP builds. It seems to yeah, me yeah. like you're having an entirely too much fun trying oh, to break the game. So That's the goal. is that something that you do when you play anyway, or is a, an area of content that you felt like there was a need for? Um. Well, that was. It started really in Destiny 1. Like, we were always trying to figure out way. You know, remember back in the day, Icebreaker and Weapons of Light. Uh, and, you know, moving forward, I was hoping that would carry over to find more broken things in D2 when it first launched. Uh, unfortunately, there wasn't really anything broken. It was just more of uh, Annie Ope and Uriel Skiff last year, right? Uh, yeah. And then Forsaken rolled around, and I was blown away by all the, I mean, it's, it's not really broken. Like nothing's really too broken yet, you know, uh, but it's just fun builds that you can manipulate uh, to get your supers almost constantly, uh, to get those one hit kills. And it, it's just a lot of fun finding those builds. It seems like you, uh, they're, they're really great instructional videos. If you guys are watching or listening right now, you should definitely check out his content regarding, you know, how to build those really fun classes. You go into great detail but it, I don't feel like you need to nerd out completely to understand what you're talking about. It's uh, oh, it yeah. really builds the concept around you. You 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 explain it very clearly, very entertaining. You bring a lot of your personality into your videos and your content. Um, are you a jokester in real life, or is Not, that you know kind of sort of um, the the way I do my videos? I, I treat it like if I was to call a buddy up and be like, "Hey, man." I got to tell you what I just found, you know, and that's okay. that's how I go into every single video. And for the longest time, you know, I open up my videos with boys, look what I got here. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and then I had a lot of ladies tell me, look, it's not just boys that are watching your YouTube videos. So acknowledging the ladies now um, and th there's actually more of them than what I thought, especially in the Destiny community. Um, but, yeah, the analytics on YouTube, it shows you like everything. Right. Um, and I, it was like one percent female. 
And I, I joked around with them. I was like, I thought that was just my mom and my wife. And that was it. I didn't think that 1% <laughs> was really anything. So, uh, but yeah. But 1% of, um, you know, a couple hundred, th you're, yeah, you're, yeah. you're sitting pretty nice on your YouTube channel. That's a really good channel you have built there. It's, it's, uh, it's grown a lot this past summer. Um, you know, I, I think everyone was kind of on the sidelines looking at Destiny and w was just waiting to see what was going to happen. Uh, Warmind was a glimpse of that. And then Forsaken came out. And I've seen so many of my own friends get back into Destiny uh, because of the improvements. And so your 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 goals, your goals for your channel, for your um, content, where are you uh, where do you see yourself a year from now? I have no idea. I was talking to a uh, one of your YouTube partner managers today, and uh, he was asking me the same thing. And I was like, look, man, I I'm so scatterbrained. Every day is just another day. And I have no idea what I'm going to make, you know. Uh, but as far as what I'm doing, I would love to keep doing Destiny stuff. Uh, but I like to dabble in some other things too, for sure. But Destiny is what I keep falling falling back to. I mean, even even in the worst of times, I still kept falling back to it because I mean, this just there's never been. I played a lot of great games, but there's never been a game that made me get up and start something. You know, like a, a YouTube channel or a Twitch channel. Destiny's been the only thing that's kind of pushed me into that. Now, granted, I've ragged on it a lot, you know, mm -hmm. in the in the past, and I've ranted a lot, and probably for good reason. But uh, but there's definitely a love there. So what are what other content would somebody tuning into your channel might find besides Destiny? I've been focusing mainly on like multiplayer games. Um, I'm looking into to Anthem for sure, even though it's not going to have multiplayer, which is a big bummer. Um, Red Dead, which is coming out tonight. Uh, looking into that. I never played the first one. Don't know if you guys have played it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I my wife played it and she she's super excited about it um and then fallout 76 i missed the beta this past weekend uh i think that was this past weekend i hate that yep. i missed it i heard a lot of good things about it uh so yes yeah, pretty much everything every every hot game and i even dabble in campaign stuff too you know last of us 2 is coming around the corner super excited about that one this year and next year are going to be very exciting oh, time for gamers, right? It's like it's right now, look at a Red Dead yep. Redemption, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like there's a bunch of small, oh, I was thinking Battlefield 5 and thinking smaller game, <laughs> but I mean, compared to Red Dead, right? It's like, that's right around the corner. Early next year, we get, uh, geez, I can't remember, Anthem and February, yeah. so, Division so two. much coming. February is back. Division 2, yeah, yeah, February is back. Crazy. Resident Evil 2 remake in January. There's oh Dark, Darksiders 3 in November. I'm going to play that. Oh. Darksiders 3 is coming out in November? Yep. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've got, like, I'm excited to have you on the podcast because I really like your take on um, on Destiny and your uh, the way that you get right to the point on things. Um, I like your take on the builds and especially your propensity to play Titans. So really excited for you to, for you to be on the show. Um, we're going to jump into... Um, there'll be more conversation later where we get to pull apart some of the, your, um, your experiences, but, um, we'll, we'll, I'd like to jump right into the news. What? Do we need okay. a, is this a thwab? Like, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, That's your marker. That's Patrick. Patrick. Okay. Um, what is, um, is it a twab or a twab? What I'm going to say that it was a twab it was because a twab. we got a little bit of a sneaky peek of some patch notes. Sneaky, yeah. sneaky peek. Good patch notes peek. too, right? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was happy to read them. Yeah. Take okay. it away, Mr. Rabbit. All right. Uh, there is also like a little uh, contest that's happening. I think from now until October 31st, uh, dress up in funny masks, armor and shaders. Uh, create an in-game costume, uh, send them into uh, at Bungie, and uh, you can get a unique emblem that mm -hmm. we reserve or they reserve. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right. So patch notes on October 30th. Is it October 30th or 31st? It's the 30th. 30th. We're getting update 2.0.5. And this is a patch notes preview. This isn't going to be everything that's in there, but there's some really cool stuff in here. So Bungie 44 will accept up to 25 Briar's, gunsmith. Briar's Bungie 44. 
for anyone. Bungie 44. He's cracking one for me. <laughs> I've just renamed him. Briar's I'm popping. cracking up. Sorry. Yeah, can we just up. time out real quick, Briar? Can you leave Discord and rejoin it and see if it fixes a crackle? He's having a little snap crackle and pop here on the stream. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Audio listeners won't have that problem. But stream listeners? How's that any better? Sounds better. Let's see if it continues. Sounds better? Yep. Just keep just keep going. Bungie right. 44. Keep going. Banshee 44 will accept up to 25 gunsmith materials at a time. Freaking thank you. Thank God. <laughs> removing, <laughs> removing the whole time for spiders material exchange interactions. Hell yeah. Let so, me spend five million shards on those. If I want to spend them all, let me spend them all. <laughs> I heard, I, I was listening to a podcast this week about Apple products. Like the weirdest thing. And all of a sudden at the end of it, they started talking about Destiny 2. <laughs> Specifically, they started talking about Spider and how the price of his stuff goes up over time mm-hmm. and how that's not communicated to you in game. And it's only it's the only place that you actually see it in Destiny, right? So if you if you're a Destiny player, you're used to seeing a price, hitting the button, hitting the button, spacing out, you're just hitting the button <laughs> over and over again. And oops, I just spent 500 legendary shards <laughs> on one item, or 5, right? 000. Actually, what I have noticed, what I have noticed at Spider, uh, the first like two, uh, when you're buying the uh, Master Records, mm-hmm. soon to be named something different, mm-hmm. um, wh- when you buy those, they're it's very short. The first two, right? And then after that, it's really long to buy them. Mm-hmm. Mm. So it's well. I ran into a husband and wife. <laughs> I ran into a husband and wife that were playing together. It was uh, through. Um, um, I just randomly found them in the tower. They wanted to play some strikes. I joined up with them. Husband and wife. He was being berated the entire time about spending all, all of his legendary shards because he was doing that exact thing. He had none left. He yeah. didn't realize that wow. it kept going up, Ooh. and he just spent them all. Well, he it's the only destroyed. time I've ever seen it in Destiny. In mm-hmm. all honesty, I can't think of another ex- another time where I've I've hit a button and the price has changed between button presses. Yeah, it's never happened. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, people yeah. need so to that, pay more yeah. attention. They should have a return <laughs> policy on those master records. Yes. Can I get a refund? I don't think Spider has a very good five minute return policy. I don't think Spider really cares. Spider's going to say, that was awfully easy for you. Uh, I'm going to leave him like a one star review on Yelp, man. Screw that. (laughs) Man, he's really concerned about his Yelp rating, too. (laughs) He is. They're increasing the stack size of Ghost Fragments from 10 to 20. That'll be nice. Good. All right. Uh, Reduced shader dismantle time from one second to 0.25 seconds. Hmm. So nice yeah, change. That's good. Yeah. Uh, exotic duplicates. So they're changing a little bit about how you get exotics. When you're receiving an exotic, we will take into account all exotics you found and weight them against the exotics you have yet to acquire. Hmm. This lowers the chances of receiving exotics you already own. Hmm. Oh. Yes mm-hmm. and no. So the likelihood of getting new exotics is going to go up. Yeah. Theoretically. I was in the haunted forest. I saw a golden delight sitting on the ground. I said, mm-hmm. oh, my God. Is this my yeah. moment? Am I going to mm-hmm. get shards of Galanor? No. Mm-hmm. Could it be? Hard light. No. Hard light. Ooh. I've got Did you have a hard light, hard... Tefty? <laughs> yes. And you know what I didn't oh, okay. have until that moment? <laughs> Nausea. That? Upset stomach. <laughs> Near vomiting. You can get Pepto-Bismol to solve that. Did Almost you have uncontrollable them. rage? No, no rage. Just a uh, loss okay. of uh, will to live. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Acceptance that's, that's of funny. your yeah. untimely death. I think they should start it. adding that to the box of destiny. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> May cause nausea, vomiting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they do say exotics that you do not yet own will be individually weighted much higher than duplicate exotics. When receiving duplicate exotics, you'll be more likely to earn armor pieces as they have randomly rolled perks and exotic quests, weapons are being removed from the exotic Engram loot pool. You can finally pick up your chaperone, Tefty. <laughs> Thank God. That thing has been sitting. <laughs> Amanda's like, do you want this gun? I'm like, not now. Nah. No. <laughs> this isn't the right time. <laughs> I actually, I, I think it would be a kind of a cool thing if they move forward, like in the future after 
DLCs and expansions doing it basically this pattern is that at first exotics are really rare. And okay. then as you move, you progress through the expansion and the next one gets closer, they start dropping more frequently. So like at, in the first few weeks, the brand new exotics, like you might get one, you might get two, but you probably won't have the same ones as your friends. So you're talking about them and it's really exciting. And then halfway through the expansion, they kind of increase the drop rate. And then right before the next expansion, they really increase it. So you get most of them. I think that'd be kind of cool. The only problem with that, Briar, is that's not how it is right now. Yeah, I've gotten only two. I've gotten a yeah, Lord it, of Wolves and it's, it's if it Keeper, if huh? it was like that, like in the first two weeks, you would get one, maybe two. Yeah. Then maybe, but it's not like that. No, I agree. I agree. All right. If we got to that point, yeah. But the problem I have with this is that under the current drop rate, this system the drop rate one hundred percent increased. Is it like absolutely? I don't know okay. if they planned to do it or if it was an accident or some All kind right. of like some kind of bug got in the system because they changed. I don't know whatever they the out of the so haunted. How many forest. have you gotten? Um. So the day that the haunted forest came out, I went mm -hmm. to the haunted forest. I got two exotic drops in there, and then I got one exotic drop in the lost sector. Were and I know I was new? playing with some, no, okay. <laughs> but exotic. <laughs> but I'm not talking about like oh I got new exotic drops oh, like. Okay exotics were dropping so yeah, okay. with this yeah. change making the duplicates less likely to happen we're more likely to get the yeah all right i i'm actually agreeing step. with you because i feel that too i've had two of them drop so far in the um in the haunted forest and a couple others in other places i can't remember specifically where but like it does feel like they, they ninja'd the the drop rate up a bit mm -hmm. i've gotten hard light twice there you go. Which is, which is really nice. Evidence which right one do you like better, the first one or the second one? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, you can keep one for each element. So instead of having to swap it in the reload, you can just change I, out the actual weapon. <laughs> I've had a, a, this is my, I've, I've been keeping track. I've had 10 repeat D1 or D, D, year one, D2 uh, uh, exotics and two forsaken total. And no weapons, by the way. None. No none weapons. Of are, none of them I, are I, weapons. I have a big fat zero of the uh, randomly dropped exotic weapons. Mm -hmm. um, but I've completed every like every single quest one. Basically, every one that you have a path to get, I've gotten. Right. So, you know, Thousand of Wolves, Malfeasons, you know, Wish Ender, just Lord of Wolves, all those that have, that have some RNG tied to them in some way. It's like I've gotten all of them because there's a path to go out and I can just fucking brute force it with the amount of time that you play. You consider Lord but of Wolves that, that one as well? Yeah, I mean, you do spider bounties. Just All right. In that case, I've had drop. one drop then, a Forsaken. Okay. Yeah. That's where I got mine too. Yeah. Yeah, I've... Uh, they're doing some exotic tuning on weapons that you don't have yet. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we missed Enhancement Cores. Oh, I'm sorry. Enhancement Cores will be... Oh, Master okay. Course. Master <laughs> Cores will... Be renamed enhancement cores. More sources will award enhancement cores. They will be added to the scrapper bounties and six of the spiders' weekly bounties. Enhancement cores will be more visible in the loot feed. That'll definitely get me to go do the scrapper bounties because right now the scrapper bounties are just something that I kind of scrap most of the Why time. Why are they renaming them? That's just confusing. Yeah. Well, because they don't want because it's used for upgrading stuff, not just master working. So they didn't feel like that represented what they did. Cool. Yeah. Are, are they going to ever use the term masterwork for anything else? A weapon can be masterworked, not enhanced okay. or work. So it won't just be called in. Yeah. Enhanced. I hope it's just not what lipstick on a pig, you know, like I hope we're just, I hope it does have a substantial, there's a I don't change. know why you got a kink shame here, like right here. Yeah. Live. So that's that's really awkward. What's wrong with lipstick on a pig, man? Huh? I, right. You know what? You're right. I'm sorry. I apologize. I need to be more inclusive. Sometimes your bacon wants to express itself. All right. Don't be shaming your bacon. <laughs> Jesus. Man That's already stupid. shamed me like for liking crawfish on the pre-show. Uh, first no, no, of all, no. I we weren't shaming you on, the, on liking. It was the amount. Fifteen <laughs> pounds. Come on, man. <laughs> and your slight and 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 the effect of it being slightly erotic for you. Could, the, that, that, yeah, these are two. That's things. just food in general. We, we had to have not cross, just crawfish. We had to have cross. Confirm the fact that 15 pounds is excessive. 
for, ten for pounds one person for sure. Entire family. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Cross was saying he feeds weights? his no. entire family and his friends and his neighbors with the amount. Yeah. He right. he throws a block party with with the. <laughs> That's not <laughs> called a lightweight. <laughs> I've told this story before, but when I was really young, my family, we we went to this place. It was like a, I think it was like Florida Seafood Company, and it's in Tennessee. So I don't, I don't Adds up. I hope. Suspicious. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> math, and the math checks out. They they had and they had a crawfish, all you can eat crawfish for like ten bucks a person. Wait, it was one crawfish and you no, you all eat. you can eat crawfish. Uh -huh. it was one, per I feel like this crawfish? is a similar situation to Patrick going to just get the bacon at the salad. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, this is completely different. No. So my family, we, we went in there and I have been eating crawfish since I was in the womb. And my parents have been eating crawfish since they were in the womb. So on and so forth. As you know, the crawfish eating begets crawfish eating. Uh, we really enjoy it. So we went there and we sat down and we were like, yes, we will have each be doing the all you can eat crawfish. They bring us out one serving. We eat it. And we're like, more please they bring us out another and another and another and eventually the manager comes out and says you have to stop <laughs> we are out you have eaten all of the crawfish um see i think they were expecting most people to just go in and have like one or two and be like oh yeah we're done AKA a normal no. person's amount of crawfish <laughs> A lightweight person who has never eaten crawfish, who is doing it for the thrill, for the you know, for the, the thrill of the car eating. crawfish. Oh, look how fun this <laughs> is! You crack their the bodies thrill? in half. Oh, it's great. No, we are there to fuck some shit up, namely crawfish. Is and, that what you're sucking out of them? Yeah, uh, it's like, like fat and uh, some other stuff. No, the 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 the, the poopy <laughs> remove it. The poop line is, yeah. is is on the tail. Like when you crack that out and pull it out and pull out the tail meat. Uh, mm -hmm. There's occasionally the intestine. You can just wipe that off. It's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that I'm curious. They were very disappointed. They never did all you can eat crawfish again. Because of you. Not. That's a hell of a deal. Ten bucks a person. Yeah. yeah. Were they going out of business at the time? Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, there's, 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 so there's probably a pre somewhere. and post Casey's eating crawfish point of time in that restaurant's uh. history <laughs> and we are now on the post case yeah theater. so yeah an era yeah. interesting huh anyway news with destiny uh, yes <laughs> <All right. laughs> so they're doing some exotic doing wish ender is getting increased base damage and they're fixing an issue where the broadhead perk would not properly activate under certain circumstances which would result in a loss of damage so they're fixing the bug and adding more damage. Interesting. Yeah, that's exciting. Cool. Yeah, I want to try it. Who here has Wish Ender? Show of hands. Okay. Around the last day for it. Are you wish nice. shaming? Oh, nice. Yes. Wish shaming. Yes. Uh, Malfeasance. They're increasing explosive shadow detonation damage and increasing okay. damage against Taken and invaders. All it right. Already, oh, yeah. It's already really good against invaders. It's. It's a 180 RPM that does the damage of, I think, a 140 RPM against invaders. Mm -hmm. It's really mm -hmm. good. So, oh, God. It's going to two-tap them. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Get out of here. <laughs> wow. Tracer yeah, rifles are getting some changes, too. The, oh, man. The, By the way, prepare for the Crucible to be super fun when this change <laughs> happens. Which one? Uh, they'll spawn with 50 ammo Trace. in the Crucible. Uh, they'll benefit from the following armor perks. Auto rifle loader, unflinching auto rifle aim, auto rifle targeting, precision weapon targeting, auto rifle dexterity. Wow. No no scavenger? No scavenger. That's Doesn't what look noticed. like scavenger. Mm. Which yeah. ammo economy is really funky too with trace rifles. Yeah. It's yeah. like when you go over an ammo yeah. brick, like sometimes I just pick up four or six or some random number. I hope they fix yeah. that because that's clearly you're not going to do much with a trace rifle with four. No, yeah. no shot with four shots. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I am so this is one of the times where I'm really glad I'm not on PlayStation because uh Wave Splitter is absolutely insane. Wave Splitter a, is nutty. Can Very you good. explain to me yeah. what this Wave Splitter is specifically? <laughs> <laughs> so in in the realm of people that actually get cool shit, uh, yeah. it is a trace rifle that has its damage properties are really weird. It's void damage, um, and it starts out like at high damage and then very quickly goes down low and then goes back like up and down. Mm. But if you go over an orb of light, I, I, I haven't used this since I was at Bungie, so all this shit could have changed. So sorry. Yeah, it um, amps it up. Yeah, okay. So if you go over an orb of light, it still amps it up. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, st- cool. it still does that. I can't remember the exact perk. Uh, I played on someone else's account, but yeah, it significantly bumps that damage up. But even by itself, it's still really good. Mm-hmm. I would say, argue and say it's the best trace rifle in the game, even without the the perk being activated. Where does it stack for, like, P- for PvP though, right? For PvP. right. Yeah, for yeah. PvP. Okay. Okay. So would you you would say it's a PvP trace rifle essentially? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen people use it in gamut, um, but I don't I don't think it's as good as I guess I mean other weapons and maybe if you wanted to use other trace rifles, Prometheus lens is really good in PvE mm-hmm. still. Yeah, interesting. And it's a PS4 exclusive, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so we don't have to worry about that one <laughs> for yeah. a while, I guess. <laughs> Uh, they're also going to do double infamy and triple infamy, basically like a double XP and triple XP weekends, uh, starting yeah. November or no, October 30th and go until November 2nd, you'll get double infamy. Uh, and then okay. starting November 2nd and go into November 6th, you get triple infamy infamy. Cool. Cool. I need to, I need to grind out some of those rank ups for various th- things. Like, what do we, yeah. What do we get for, for even maxing out infamy? Uh, so the first reset, you get a, uh, pretty well-rolled trust, but I think explosive, explosive okay. payload and dragonfly on it. I think, I think that's the role. Uh, it's, it's okay. And it's like fully masterworked. Uh, then the second thing is a, it's like a tracking cluster bomb rocket launcher, gambit rocket launcher. Fully masterworked. Fully masterworked again. And then I think on, I think on one of the, the third one is like, uh, is it a ghost? It might be a ghost. Hmm. Gambit specific okay. ghost. Yeah, I have. I haven't. Uh, I, I've only gotten the first reset. I'm. I. I'm, I lost my will to kind of play Gambit for a while after grinding for malfeasance for so long, and so I just kind of put that game mode to the side mm-hmm. for a little bit to work on other stuff. Hmm. I still haven't found the butthole. <laughs> I have a life. Meatball. Plus, honestly, oh, uh, the Gambit <laughs> weapons are really good, just in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. leveling up and getting them is mm-hmm. is good. I got lucky. I got one of those. Uh, I got a trust with uh, Drop Mag, uh, Reload Masterwork, and Explosive Rounds, and Dragonfly. And that thing Ooh. reloads like it's like outlaw mm-hmm. every single time. Now you lose bullets, right. but it's got nine in the magazine. So as long as I'm like... Pat 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 reload pat 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 reload. It it plays really nice. I like that gun a lot. I feel I feel like the gambit weapons in general are all very very solid. Mm-hmm. Like they've they mm-hmm. feel good. I mean it's a it's a mode that demands more of you if you're wanting to do well in it. So the rewards are you know they're worth it. Tier a little bit higher. Yeah. It's not like Crucible where we have a. Man, that have you guys seen the the SMG from Crucible? Have you ever been killed by it? Is that thing called again? Nope. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, it's like harsh truths or it's got like three truth. stability. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it, it has like basically negative stability. I wouldn't be surprised. Wow, yeah, it's pretty awful. Poor SMGs. Uh, the refer a friend program is back with update two point oh five, and there's some rewards here. Very glimmery stuff. I mean, the Borealis ornament's pretty cool. Oh, it's real pretty. <laughs> that is pretty pretty. Oh, that's it's pretty. pretty. It is pretty. Yeah, I kind of want that. What is it doing? It's like a multicolored snake skin. Yeah. Yeah, that wow. changes and moves. It's like Gamer. RGB on like tinfoil or something. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a good way Looks to describe like a, it. A razor shader. <laughs> a razor shader, yeah. I think, is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's an good. emblem. There's a sparrow with the same effect. I think the sparrow is actually pretty cool too. This, yeah, I love it. The sparrow is cool. Yeah. Sponsored by Razor. Yeah, it's uh, it's cool, man. I and so, th- what do you have to do to refer a friend? I don't know. We'll have to wait till uh, somebody posts a YouTube video about how to smurf an account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like they have to not we have. Can all get it. <laughs> forsaken, right? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the veteran player requirements. A veteran player, so a new player requirement is anyone who does not own Destiny Forsaken or has owned it for less than seven days. Once a player has owned it for longer than seven days, they are no longer eligible to be referred for the refer a friend promotion. So, and then there's a quest that you have to do together. So. Of course, interesting. So you gotta learn how to use a controller with your feet while you do one, <laughs> and your feet do the other player. 
This yeah. could be the first time on LFGs <laughs> where people are asking for someone with no experience. <laughs> <laughs> right. Must have nothing. Am I gonna am I gonna have to like dual box? Like, I I kinda wanna try that. I used to do that in WoW, you know, play two accounts at the same time. Mm-hmm. Have, Destiny. Do like two monitors, one yeah. on the left, one on the right. Well, I have an ultra wide, so I, I oh. just keep it all on one. Oh, like split yeah. screen. Oh, nice. Yeah. There we go. I like it. I like mm-hmm. it. That's very cool. Mm-hmm. I really want to actually try that. <laughs> uh I guess that's it, right? Yeah. That's pretty the right. Yeah. Nothing really? about Oathkeeper. There was a stuff either. stuff about a meetup at TwitchCon. DMG and Cosmo are going to be there. They're not doing anything there, but they want to go and meet Destiny creators. Right. Yeah. I think so. they're going to be giving out free beers and hot dogs. That's what I heard. Damn. Maybe. Yeah, definitely. Pretty sure. Go to the meet and greet at TwitchCon. Say that yeah. you heard they're giving out free beer and hot dogs. That's right. Cash in that token <laughs> for your free beer and hot dog. <laughs> Any, and anybody going to? Thing... Anybody going to TwitchCon? No. no, yeah, I'm not able to make it down there. Red Dead, yeah, Red Dead's coming out. Dead. That pretty much That's sealed it for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, the the great thing about TwitchCon is everyone goes to TwitchCon, and that means I can capitalize on everyone going to TwitchCon. It's true. <laughs> uh, but nobody in this room is going to TwitchCon. Well, that's the point. Is that we'll capitalize we will on. capitalize. Yeah. <laughs> at at, about at that. the first TwitchCon, they announced like Amazon, the <laughs> Twitch Prime thing. Twitch, yeah, I was streaming, and it was like. Oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> I think that's the last time a lot of people went to Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, like, they, they learned real hard. There's there. a lot of people going, though. Oh, yeah. Last time they got to announce something like that. Yeah. yeah during yeah. TwitchCon. Yeah, for sure. Hey, all those content creators in the audience. <laughs> if you were streaming right now, <laughs> if you were, you would benefit from this a lot. <laughs> Uh, that's um, crazy. The only other stuff in the TWAB is just letting you know how the update's going to go on the 30th. Um, 8 a.m. is when the maintenance begins, but no di- downtime is expected. And then at 9.45, if you haven't installed the update yet, you will get kicked. You got install. So pretty standard be- stuff. Before we talk yeah. about anything else, can I ask you guys like serious question? How are you... How do you guys feel about Festival of Lost like, in general? Like Now that we're seeing it... Mm-hmm fleshed out a little bit i enjoyed it for about three days and then pretty much forgot about it i have not seen the murder mystery i cannot comment yeah what's up Mm, with the murder mystery it starts on the 30th yeah so it's coming in the patch yeah yeah right yeah Yeah. right thunder Thunder. do you think thunder lord is going to be easy to get or if it's going to be like you got to solve the murder mystery become legend Mm. in comp for your Thunderlord. <laughs> <laughs> while like, wearing a what? mask. Yeah, while yeah, wearing a mask. That's right. Oh, man. That would be the You have to dismantle <laughs> one not forgotten and add the core of it to your Thunderlord. <laughs> I'd be disappointed about that. Yeah, I... I'm ready to blow up. I've had a lot of fun playing with my son, and um, I can tell you that the, um, the Lost Forest the, that that whole remake of it, the spooky remake of it has been, has been fun. It really has been. Yeah. I like like that. It's match made. And, um, as a solo player, I'm often find myself, you know, looking for activities and that's something that has been fun. It really talked about it a little bit last week, Pope. And one of the things that we were saying is that it's like a good start for like a horde mode, Mm -hmm. you know, but I'd like to see it expanded on, you know, like this is, Kind yeah. of something we've been asking for for a while, and it's a good start, and it's great that it's a lost, you know, or a, you know, it's a seasonal event kind of thing. But I'd like to see them add something like this in a DLC that's more fleshed out, and you can really sink some time into. Right. I, I like it. I, you know, I think aesthetically it's very cool. The, you know, the having that night chase you around is a lot of fun. The ending kind of has a twist, which is cool. You know, and being able to kind of throw yourself and try and. Get, at it and try and get to further and deeper rounds is fun, but there's not really a reward for doing so. And I'd like mm-hmm. to see that addressed, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think what would have made the haunted forest better for me, like I enjoyed just going in there and shooting things. Like that's always fun to do. And there's a time and place where I want to go and do that. But having something locked behind 
either getting to a certain level in there or enabling us to do some kind of mechanic to kill the knight and that gives us a reward just to mm -hmm. have it like you said Brian it's just more fleshed out it's kind of just here's a spooky forest go in there kill things for 15 minutes kind of thing mm -hmm. but having something like this more fleshed out could work really well and I think this is kind of a different tangent but it shouldn't be too bad uh, this is kind of a show of I would love to see Bungie use stuff that they've done better, like reuse that space for something fun and interesting. Because the Infinite Forest is a prime example of something that they made that's actually pretty cool, but they just didn't utilize it yeah. at all. And I think the same thing could be said with like the Barons. You could make, you know, harder encounters of the Barons and then them have specific loot that you get from them. All mm. of that is stuff that they have to add some new stuff to. But they get to reuse like that yeah, whole encounter. easily leverage a boss rush mode right. with the barons. That'd be cool. That'd be amazing. That'd yeah. be really cool. Cross, how do you feel about the festival loss? Uh, I liked it. What's the furthest someone's gotten? Has Glad gotten the furthest? I think so, like I think 16 or 17. To, like 16. 16 or 17. Yeah, 16 I think I only made right. it to like eight or nine. Um, yeah, it would have been cool if, if I don't know, like at 15 or something, like they discovered something, you know, unlock something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, unlock someone, man. Wouldn't that got people just buzzing? Yeah. Um, oh, for sure. And then, uh, of course, loot. Well, you know, that's that's the big thing. People will do anything if they if they know there's going to be some good loot on the other end too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know how y'all feel about the auto rifle. I think it's all right, but you know, maybe some other options there, something to to go after, mm -hmm. especially for the the crucible guys. But it's I mean, a good auto so, rifle. I'm just not a fan of auto rifles in general. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It but, feels uh, like there could have been an opportunity for there to be um, something hidden in there. Yeah, it's it seemed that way. Just the way, I mean, it was dark, it, it, the design and everything. It felt like you were going to stumble on something if you just kept getting a little further. Like a shrine. Further mm -hmm. in the waves. Yeah, like yeah. What if you stumbled on a shrine that had like three knights looking at it? And you're like, three knights? What? <laughs> what is this shrine? Oh, my God. Boom. You Destiny go 3. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Teleports you. <laughs> early access I, no, it, it I think, feels like it feels like it has that ability though oh for sure i think in terms of an actual holiday event i think it's perfect it hits yeah, the mark yeah. for a holiday event that's going to go away in like three weeks like it mm -hmm. it works checks off all the boxes it's fun to collect the masks and level them up and collect the horror story and all that stuff but it really, really, really highlights the fact that Destiny really, really, really needs a horde mode that can expand and grow. Just like Watts was talking about, use all these assets to put them into a tile set type of randomly generated system that can grow and have rewards associated with them. Because I like playing strikes, but the strikes are the strikes. And at a certain point, you've got everything from the strikes. And sure, yeah. if you could have things like that that are fresh every time, maybe not like 100% fresh because you've seen all the tile sets before, but they they throw them together in ways that you just, that you can be unexpected and have rewards and tiers of stuff that you want to collect and possibly craft or forge or whatever. Like that is just PVE gold for people to grind. Well, Tefty, what do you think of them taking activities like that and pressing on that curated role concept and you could have a week where this week's curated role for this activity is changing right they can adjust it yeah. they can you can get that level 10 mass work but start looking at it for activity based um so they talk about these weekly you know focus points and then planets and different activities that happen on these planets each week we talked about the, the armor being specific from those areas. What if we had curated armor roles that came from these activities that we would do in different planets? I think it comes down to what Cross said. It's like, if there's loot to grind after, people will do it. And one of the reasons why Leviathan kind of came and went in terms of a raid is because once you got the stuff, you were done. There was no roles with the weapons. Yeah, sure. Everybody got sure. in two weeks pretty much. Yeah, like you got it and then yeah. you were done. There wasn't a reason to, to re-grind it. And... That's what Forsaken has done has been like, let's bring back a lot of reasons to grind things. And sure. I think this mode highlights the fact that Destiny really needs a mode like that that has lots of things to grind for and can have a lot of variables that change within each reset, different tile sets, all that stuff. 
And Destiny's done stuff like that pretty successfully, but not just just not gone all the way. Mm-hmm. Like EP was probably the best thing we've seen of that, where it was waves and there was really good loot tied to that and armor. Yep. So if they just took what they've learned from doing like Archon's Forge and EP and the Haunted Forest and just kind of put it all together to make something with really cool loot, then I think we'd be pretty yeah. happy. Yeah. I'd be pretty happy. Which it's side tangent. Uh after now that it's been like almost two months, I'm I'm kind of disappointed with the blinding well. Like we had escalation yeah, protocol. I would agree. Escalation protocol was awesome. It had every time you played it, it's like man, you go to these different locations, different spawn points. There's weapons. There's a whole set of armor. The blind well is like it's very bland in comparison. There's no specific loot for blind well. Like I know it's dreaming city stuff. And I, that's a way to kind of you can't even grind for Dreaming City stuff, though, because you're not getting something from the chest every single time. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Like maybe if you could grind random rolls of Dreaming City weapons in the well, that would have made it more interesting because it's like, OK, I got a retail tale. OK, well, I don't really like this role. Let me try and get another one. Yeah. And of course, it wouldn't be powerful, but you'd still have a way to get it from that. Yeah, chest. have a chance to keep pulling, pulling the lottery for yeah. like a tiger spider retold tale and. And it, yeah. it needed something specific to it as well. Yeah, it's like even if it's just one spe- one weapon that's specific to Blindwell or whatever, it doesn't need to be a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, but I think just the loot is kind of lacking with the well. I think the loot, <laughs> the gameplay, I think is a little lacking too. It's it's very repetitive, and it's you know it changed a little bit in the first couple of weeks, but then after that, it's been well. This is just literally the most mind numbing thing right now in Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I don't know. It was pretty mind numbing the first couple times that I was doing it because you weren't, you weren't, you weren't high enough to really do tier three, uh, you know, well enough. Uh, so you had to do a lot of tier twos to kind of complete that weekly. And oh man, that got that got pretty tiring pretty quickly. Yeah, you had to do a lot of it right off the bat. Yeah, I mean, and then so you kind of get sick of it because it doesn't really change escalation protocol. When you did it, you know, there are seven different segments to it. Whereas this feels like you just do the same thing over and over again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, the waves don't change enough, I guess, like between mm, that, you doing it, that's it's what just I'm the same kind of enemy, like over and over again, instead yeah. of, okay, we're on the second part. It's getting harder. We've got these dudes now, like throw the knights in there, like the nightmare knights. Yeah. In there's, one of the waves. there's like, that'd be exciting. There's some mechanics to escalation protocol. Like, not a lot, but there's yeah. some mechanics, and it's in a big yeah. enough space that changes that you don't feel like you're always in the same spot huddling this egg from the Dreaming City and in, in like, the fog. You're constantly fogged out, you know? I mean, there there, there are mechanics to the, to the what, Tier 3 the and boss, uh, yeah. Tier 4 bosses. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, kind of goes along the same lines of Escalation Protocol, where you don't yeah. really get mechanics until the very end. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, it's not bad. I think it, it was I, fun to like. I want loot. Yeah, I want specific loot for the blind well. I think basically the thing with Destiny is you can create the most amazing PVE experience, but the vast majority of people are going to get the loot and they're going to not want to do it anymore. You yeah. have to have loot and interesting reasons to keep coming back to do that activity. And if it's not there, people just won't do it. And the varying kind of loot, right? Well, that's the big thing about Forsaken was bringing in random roles and, yeah. and hunting and searching for that god role and being able to lord it over your friends when you get it to drop, right? That's the <laughs> excitement of it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I feel like as for me, the blind well has been achievable and something that I really enjoy doing with my wife and son who aren't that skilled at PVP and we can go in there and have fun. And we had a lot of fun with Archon's Forge and a lot of fun with the, the those kind of limited horde mm-hmm. modes. So I can see it needing to have some scalability with the tier three and four being more challenging and offering more variance. But I definitely see one and two, um, maybe even three, keeping a similar format, but, you know, changing it up a little bit. It definitely, for a lower skill player, it does present, it gives you an opportunity to learn your supers and to um, work as a team. And it's challenging for mm-hmm. lower skill players. That's totally. And I'm not saying that I didn't enjoy it the first couple of weeks because I actually did. I thought yeah. it was fun. I also had this notion that there might have been a f- fifth or sixth or seventh tier as well that could open up other stuff. Uh, 
Yeah. But in retrospect, thinking about Escalation Protocol, what they did, they kind of did the cla- classic Destiny development thing where they had this cool concept and then just stopped right there. Didn't like let it expand into something else because I don't necessarily think it needs to be harder. I just think it needs to be less monotonous. <laughs> yeah, there just needs to be more variety. Yeah. Between and loot, rounds, even if it's maybe? just a even if it's just a class item and like a weapon, mm-hmm. one weapon, a class item. It's like so, okay, well, I'm gonna grind for this thing. What one of the things that uh, I kind of thought was interesting is do you guys visually Dreaming City armor? Mm-hmm. You guys like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that. definitely. Okay. Dark Souls. Um, yeah, Dark Souls. <laughs> one of the things that's been has been kind of frustrating is that it's all mobility armor on yeah. like Titan and I think Warlock as well, and it's like oh, okay, well. The both Dreaming City and Raid Armor is like the only place that you can get a lot of the enhanced perks. Yeah. Too. Yeah. And it's like, oh, unless I, unless I want to go this one specific route with like how my character is specced with you know mobility, resilience, recovery. It's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna uh, if if I want to be an optimal player, I can't be optimal. You gotta kind of cherry pick that enhanced perk piece. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want hand cannon reload, then go with that for an enhanced perk, and then. You use some other types of armor mm. to get the stats you want. Now that's only from the raid, right? Enhancement perks. I think that's uh, it's from the Dreaming City as well. Mm-hmm. Dreaming City as well. Okay. Yeah, it's, but that's the only two places power. you can get it. You can't get it from the Crucible at all. You can't get it from. Right. Uh, it it is on exotics too. That's right. My bad. Um, it just it needs to be end game content gives enhanced perks, especially going forward. Because let me tell you, if you drop something like a raid lair or some other thing in a DLC and it doesn't have enhanced perks, why am I going to use that armor? Why am I going to grind for that armor? I'm, if I'm trying to be super optimal, yeah, I'm not what, going to. What, I'm just going to go back to Dream City. Wish? Hmm? Oh, the tenth, the tenth wish was discovered for the raid. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, took you it? long enough. Damn. What is it? <laughs> Good God. Uh, if you input the tenth wish, it makes the drifter narrate throughout the raid, just nice. like with failsafe. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, okay. I thought it had cool. to do with people were spamming it in chat. I thought it had to do with the blind well. You guys are off topic. Okay. Off topic chat. <laughs> the chat. You're gonna have to take I mean, okay. that's, that's an exhausted the tenth wish, blind though. well discussion. Honestly. Well, Definitely. We, it's definitely something that, but, you know, looking at it as an activity moving forward, it can build on it and grow. I feel like Forsaken's in a really good place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm but still. Could you imagine, though, with all of the open space in the um, the Dreaming City being Escalation yeah. Protocol style? Oh, wow. That would be really That'd be cool. That'd, That'd be great. Be dope. See, that's, that's one problem I had with Blindwell is that it was, like, locked away. Yeah. It was locked away, but not match made. So it's like, if you're going to lock it away have it match made seeing as I'm having to go to this like far off location anyway. But if it's like a public space, then okay. Yeah. Have it not be match made, have people be able to just jump in like with EP. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to just lock it in the space super far away, you don't know who's in there. It's in a completely different space. Even if it says that someone's in there, it doesn't mean anything. Cause when you go yeah. in, it's a different place. Yeah. <laughs> have we're doing it that crouch made. walk, just like we were back <laughs> yes. in. Uh... Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying yeah. to get the zone to load people in. Yeah. Um, I want one or the other. I want, I want you guys to know, since since location. last time we spoke, since last time we spoke, I got my warlock, solar warlock leveled up, mm. and I'm in love. How, what what does leveled up mean? It's I've completed all the subclass, the subclass. all the bubbles. Oh, okay, right, right, right. Yeah, and it's a uh, five ninety eight. Okay. Nice. Okay, so oh my god, I'm in love with that thing. They're fun. It's nice that to have is, one around too during that a raid. Is a Absolutely. Blast. I am so happy that they put that into the game. I know you guys were like asking me about it if I had a chance to to level it up. And I, I started thinking about it because it is the most fun for me to go into Blindwell and be that guy. Mm-hmm. Just, I enjoy that too. Oh God. My you know, yes, it's with fun. the harmony, putting it down. I was putting down like three like staffs at one time you know yeah. and just really feeling like i was supporting my team i'd be running around oh, making yeah, you sure throw health to people too yeah yes that's cool yes. if you have people right. in your well of radiance and you have harmony you can literally chuck grenades as, as fast as possible just boom it's boom so boom so boom. much fun and you know what this is showing is that a support class actually works and feels pretty good in Destiny. Yeah, it does. It does. And we haven't yeah. we haven't had it before. It actually, you know, you don't usually have that kind of stuff in in FPS games like this. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And I think Bungie kind of didn't want to have roles. They were like, everyone can kind of do everything. But I think this is really interesting that they made a support class and it actually feels good and it plays good and it's fun to use. I I literally read any of the like the this is, um, you know, rumor leak kind of thing that's been kind of making the rounds for the last few days. Uh Oh, Uh, this is. It comes from this guy on Reddit, Anon the Nine, who who has been right about stuff in the past. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but you know, he's kind of saying that Destiny Three is now like in development, and they're really leaning toward the RPG side of Destiny for the next one. And that's very interesting. That kind of goes to what we're seeing with the Forsaken subclass that Pope really likes. Is if they kind of if they move in that direction for Destiny 3, I think that could really... It could give a lot more customizability for your character. It could give a player the 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 feeling that, like, I'm building this character the way I want to play as opposed to just selecting, like, a pre-made subclass, yeah. right? I hope so. Yes. I would love that, personally. I mean, this it is just a rumor in- on Reddit, but, I mean, right. you know. If they're going I, it, more it, RPG as well, it's also, like more defined roles mm-hmm. yeah so you'd be like i'm gonna be a warlock because i want to do this thing mm-hmm. not because it's like oh you know i kind of like the dress they wear i mm-hmm. you would be making more conscious decisions about the role you pick yeah yeah Which how is, do you think uh, that would affect pvp a, if it's going to go deeper in the rpg side yeah. is there any way they can s- separate it i know we've been asking that <laughs> uh, that would be ideal <laughs> wow but that would be the only way the I, I guess. I, mean, <laughs> I think they should. If they're going more RPG route, I think they need to. Oh, they do. Route. Yeah, I want them to go RPG route. I mean, even though I, I play Crucible, I mean, Forsaken has brought a lot of exotics that, yeah, Ursa Furiosa, Borderline Broken, you know, Shards, a little out of hand, especially when you've got a lot of teams using it in comp. But, I mean, they make the game fun. Yeah. And so I hope that's the direction that, that Bungie keeps taking it. And whatever happens, you know, happens, I think I, guess. I think they so, might. This is this is just spin foil hat. Like I have no basis for understanding this, but if they go with the success of the uh, of, of Gambit, of a PVEVP, PVPVE. Anyway, um, oh, having uh, Destiny Three be something where you can open world, uh, compete against other guardians. That's they, another part of this rumor, leak, Pope, right? actually, is that right. there he's he's kind of saying that there's going to be a PvEVP zone. Hmm. Right. And I'm thinking that if that's the direction they go with, the arena style PvP may be on its way out. Okay. Really? So you're talking about like Battle Royale in a way? I, or just and, a zone where anything can go? So maybe, uh, so Patrick's not going to say a damn thing, but. If he I'm was intently if, looking at uh, the the little thing I use to clean my glasses. That's, good. So just take your glasses off. You're blind. You can't see. You can't hear. That's yes. how it works, right? So yes. um, what I'm looking at <laughs> is like uh, this would be an appropriate time for him to talk about WoW and what they do with their open worlds, where you can fight against different classes and different things like that. They talk about in that in that quote unquote leak, whatever. Something that we've actually brought up in the past, where you have. And Watts gets like salivates every time we start talking about this. But, you know, the darkness classes, right? So the, yeah. the evil side yes. of this and yes. all those. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And yes. So imagine that we would be able to fight against other guardians that are chosen the path of darkness in these open zones there. And that's where those that's where the PVP comes from. And you can go into arenas where, you know, you're going to be battling uh, against other classes. I would love it. I would right? love it. Are you? Are you suggesting like you pick almost a faction when you log in or when you create a character and one That's one right. side would be you know the side of light and the traveler and one side or would be the like side of darkness? A story where sure. you kind of go along and it's like, oh, they split and this is how the dark guardian happened, this is how the light one happened. Make your decision. Like you could pick this like, fact we have factions in Destiny like, now. Like you could pick the horde. Oh, they're not fun they factions. Mean nothing. Yeah, yeah. No, we don't. <laughs> Yeah, they don't they really don't mean really. much. No, we don't. What, like what, yeah. when well, when, what when there's a world of when you're for the horde. Yes. Look, Taro God. Yeah. What does that mean for somebody who doesn't play World of Warcraft? Okay, look. Um, it, it means it, it means I tell me like I'm a I fifth will kill grader. every alliance <laughs> player that I ever run okay. across, and yes, I, if I see red, it's dead. Okay. 
So there is, would you say there's strong feelings one way or another within World of Warcraft if you're an Alliance or Horde? Yes. Okay. Extremely. Do we find that same satisfaction of loyalty uh, in, in Destiny other than maybe some off-color jokes about warlock dresses or hunters, mm. you know? I mean, honestly, the, the, the largest faction, if we're talking about, like, you know, players, you know, talking about their differences and whatnot of, oh, I, I chose this and you chose that. I don't like you. It's not from factions. It's from classes. Right. In Destiny. You always see us bickering about warlocks yeah. and titans. And, you know, titans are over here sure. flexing in the mirror. Warlocks and hunters are just fucking <laughs> fighting <laughs> off in the corner. You know, that's th that's the biggest, uh, you know, type of faction war that we've ever so had. So if, if we take that and embrace that. Right. If we embrace that concept, if Destiny goes that direction and embraces it like like they've been doing with Forsaken, take something that's key to the game and embrace it a thousand percent. Like, let's say class warfare becomes it. Right. Um, what if they double down on that and classes become, you know, everybody knows warlocks are going to be evil. Right. Everybody does. No, well, what if they did? What Clearly. if they did, did it like this where you have the current three right now that's for the light and then they had like three new ones that were sure. darkness? And you, and you had like six Everyone's, slots to, you know, have each one. Go dark. <laughs> that would be amazing, we, honestly. Like, would anyone be on the light side? No, no one would. At the say. start, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> not even. Close. So we will have no one to fight no. against, and the PvP community will be barren because there's like one dude who's on the light side. Oh, just like, yeah, just, just like, just like every day, it's like World of Warcraft, where everyone's like everyone's on the board now. Thing. No yeah. one wants to be on Alliance. <laughs> Uh, that well, been I, that sounds like a fantasy world, but man, that that would be so cool to sure. log in and like it would be really pick cool. a dark character and have like the whole theme of destiny change to be evil, you know, and yes. darkness and all that. And, like, yes, I I would like to see story repercussions if you do choose to fight for the darkness and use a dark, whether it's a subclass or a new class or whatever it ends up being, like it's got to figure into the story somehow because. I think it kind of does with Awoken, right? Because they're like in the middle. Out of my story. They're, yeah, they're like. My yeah, but I'm saying like maybe right. that's how it starts. That Awoken are kind of in the middle, and that's how you figure out a way to kind of tune into the dark side. What I don't and, want is Bife telling me why this is important to me. I want to know from playing the game why it's important. Oh no, of course, of course. Um, I think it would have to be like, I don't know. You find you find out something that the Vanguard did. And you're mm -hmm. like, there's two kind of arguments of it. One was, well, we had to do this to save our people in our city. And the other one yeah. is, you guys are actually just monsters. So if you think that they're monsters, maybe like, I'm going to go to the dark side and go against you guys because you're not doing this right. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it could be something like that. I think the Vanguard do some pretty sketchy stuff. So for I think sure. the door is open for us to just turn against them and be like, no. No. Maybe it I could be a it. split of Ikora and Zavala. So yeah, like Cora's like, well, she did say, call him a bitch, right? Basically, yeah, Howard. Okay, same. Well, same. I you heard know, bitch. same thing. Have y'all <laughs> heard of the Tados? <laughs> Maybe I inferred it. <laughs> y'all may have heard of the game Ion. I don't know if any of y'all. It's like a new mm -hmm. RPG. Yeah. Um, I don't. I think WoW probably does the same thing, but they had like that one social area. It's not really a social area. It's a, it's a whole planet where you would fight uh, the different factions. And yeah. uh, what was cool was you know you had your your basic NPCs that would come down and fight you or your, your PVE side of things that would just randomly show up. But um, I really like that you would look at that so that area and it would say how much control the faction has of it. You know, does WoW do the same thing? If, you know, if you could do the same thing with the darkness and the light and be mm. like, all right, the darkness has 75% control of the EDZ or something like that. Yeah, there were some various areas like that in WoW over, the, over its history and, and Vanilla they had... Uh, a zone that like could be controlled by uh, a faction by like people would have to do like this weird thing where they carried stuff to the home to their respective bases, whichever base got to max first won it. Uh, Wintergrass was another zone where there was like this one one faction would hold it, the other faction would have to attack the base, and if they attacked it, then that faction had access to a raid. Hmm. Um, and so the only way to get access to the raid was huh. yeah, yeah. control of it, really. By taking that control is, of it. Mm, actually wow, included cool. in this leak somewhat is, is they do say the PvE VP zone will 
uh, allow players to fight for territory. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, man, that's awesome. I mean, I I would love the idea of that. Like Watts was talking about, like it meaning something if you decide to do one thing or another. I'd love to be able to have the uh, the darkness or the Doritos ships um, that are arriving in the galaxy have an influence over some elemental piece of the midichlorians in us. I'm just kidding. Um, some aspect. Can we block Pope. I can't believe you <laughs> use that word in front of me. <laughs> um so let's just say like the darkness is able to influence maybe the awoken within us uh you know or that darkness piece of us and um i don't know i I, i'd love to see that aspect of it yeah sounds interesting sounds like when leaks like this come out like they're not necessarily true but they at least they're fun to talk about yeah they get the pot stirring yeah Yeah. i've always thought that destiny He's hmm? right about so much in Forsaken. He has been right you know. about stuff. Yeah. He's this guy. <laughs> the, the thing, though, for me, it's like Destiny 3 <laughs> seems like it's... I, I, I would be very surprised if we saw Destiny 3 next year. Very surprised. Oh, I mean, no. if they, if no. they oh. literally just started saying that we're they're starting to make Destiny 3, we're not even going to see it in 2020. It's going to be... A, Destiny 1 was, in, was being created for like seven years. Yeah. If yeah, they're, they're changing they already, a lot and everything, it's going to be a long time. It's going to yeah, be way rumor, longer than that. The rumor also says expect another year three of Destiny 2 that looks similar to year two with a September mm-hmm. big mm-hmm. DLC and then an annual pass for the rest of the year. Oh, okay. Cool. Which I would ex- yeah. I would have expected, frankly, before this, like too. That. that sounds yeah. great. Yeah. I, mean, I think that's like the great. ideal setup for Destiny because if if Black Armory is good... I think historically it would be the first time that we've had a great DLC in December in comparison to everything else. It's not even DLC. They're changing everything about how they do everything. Yeah. Like they're not doing these like content drop things anymore. They're like, we're going to make your end game more exciting. You're going to have more stuff to do in the end game instead of starting from scratch and being like, oh, campaign. Woo. Yeah. I'm excited to see it unfold. I want to see how things, how the systems change and how they update stuff in the game absolutely my biggest fear is that we start from scratch with destiny 3 again i know Dedicated that's my servers. biggest fear too yeah, yeah doing it all over again. again doing it all over again it's going to be a tough sell too my biggest oh, yeah, fear i don't know if i, I would want to do it again <laughs> my biggest fear is if they drop peer-to-peer pvp like i i love that so much i don't want them to drop peer-to-peer ever <laughs> You know, and if <laughs> Destiny 2 does come out or Destiny 3 does come out in 2020, like we're, you know, we're seeing like really strong rumors about the next generation of consoles, consoles now. Yeah. So yeah. like we can expect that. I would say maybe 2019, but probably 2020. So Destiny 3 could be launching alongside the new consoles, which may mean that they have a little more headroom to get 60 frames per second. <laughs> Right? I mean, I'm pretty sure the next gen, at least for PvP segments, it would be 60. I hope if so. PlayStation's warming up to cross play, cross save, Destiny 3 having cross play, cross save, um, and yeah. this type of environment that, that, that this leak is proposing, you know, saying that could be, you know, obviously that's a long shot, but if this is the case, I mean, there is a bright future for Destiny coming up. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. for sure. Um, I, I Pope, I, I really think that that's going to be a required feature in games moving forward. I think, you know, like we're going to see a transition where games are adding it and some games have it, but some games don't. But I think it's going to become a, a feature where it doesn't have cross play or cross save. Are you kidding me? Right. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like, yeah, I, I think, think so. we'll come yeah. to that point pretty quickly. Because I mean, I mean huge, like, yeah. what does it matter? What? What system Tefty's playing on it? If if me and Tefty both want to play, and he's on Xbox One and I'm on PS4, I don't care. I just want to play with my friends. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. it, the game. If the game can support that, then the game should support that. And if the PlayStation is going to start allowing it, then there's no excuse not to. What was that, Chris? Diablo just recently. Are are they in the the process of adding crossplay? Diablo three. Oh, I don't I'm know. Not sure, actually. That's- that's what I read the other day. Yeah, Blizzard was was talking about it, and that Diablo three was going to be adding like for crossplay. PS4 and Xbox and Switch, possibly. That's uh, a big deal. Yeah, I, I think. I mean, I think all of the above. 
Uh, but I mean, if Blizzard's already looking into that, you know, being right there next to yeah. to Bungie, exactly. PC and Xbox One. So. Oh, PC and Xbox. It's, oh. it's, no, no, PC and consoles. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's awesome. That's, so yeah. it, I, I, That's I can really see the cool. the biggest argument is like the PvP community is saying that there's just not that parity between if if cross play is a thing just the parity between the experience from a console to a pc and being matched up oh it'd be rough it's so, uh, again it's so easy yeah. to overcome though just have different cues for different consoles <laughs> like and if i want to play with somebody if i'm on pc and i want to play with a friend who's on playstation then they they're they're joining the pc queue but okay. also I'm, I'm sorry i'm just laughing at peep at, at that whole thing because i People on PC complain about people using controllers because of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point too. I yeah. mean, and then and then like you know, everybody go, thinks go everybody back else is getting of, the advantage. Yeah. No, no. Go back to the start of like PC on this. It's like if you're not using a mouse and keyboard, you're just not going to be good. They'll, they'll shit all over controller users. But like, you know. the main thing is like <laughs> talking about the PvP frames. immediately. There's the a lot of things you could do that isn't PvP. Like you could raid together and cross cross play. You could play strikes. Yeah, right. You could do story content. All that you could. You could do you know, most of the game. most of the game as crossplay. And then, yeah, if you do get to the point where you play PvP together, then just make console join uh, P- PCQ, just like Holt said. Or was it Briar? I think there's a way around it. Well, I, 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 I really like. I want to just be able to play with you guys if you're doing. You know, a raid or something like that. I, I would like to be able to jump in. I am even a fan of cross save. I mean, as a baby step for these kind of issues. I, I don't mind buying it on PC. I don't mind buying it on Xbox when I have all of those anyway. Um, just I don't want to regrind everything. My my cross know. save should be the first step that they add to Destiny Two. Sure. Cross play should be in Destiny Three. That's right. I'm I'm okay with this. Yeah, we've decided. Good 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 discussion. Nailed it. Make it happen. <laughs> write that down. <laughs> Somebody write that down. Can we get the uh, minutes of meeting on this? <laughs> Don't we just get to say make it so and it happens? Isn't right? that one of Nick's new jobs that we're going to yeah, pay a bus for? Yeah, Nick's <laughs> doing minutes of meeting. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Make sure to <laughs> clip that and send it to Bungie, please, for minutes of action items. Mm-hmm. Done. Okay, thank Yep. On it. <laughs> you guys want to do some Twitter questions? Yeah. Oh, you know, hold on yeah, one second. Yeah, I heard there's some. Doos- yeah. I got to say, I was able to do the uh, the throne the dungeon the endless the shattered throne mm-hmm. yes i got to solo it and flawless uh wow this last weekend nice it was very nice, nice. it was fun nicely done i i developed my strat for the ogre i knew i could do it and i worked on it with my warlock failed because i got i got greedy actually i had like the ogre down mm. to a sliver and then when the axing darts killed me um <clears throat> But I, I had everything worked out, and then I did it with my hunter, and was successful. I was very proud about that. I got what's my. The, what's the hardest the challenge? Hardest? What's the hardest challenge of, of of getting ready for that or executing your strat? The hardest part's the ogre, one hundred percent, by far. Like the ogre. Has, has anybody else done it? Oh yeah, lots of people. Oh, yeah. yeah, but the no, no, no. Like on the crew. Oh. Oh no, I have not. No, not I on live. Didn't do a live. Okay. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I think Doesn't I that, that myself I can do the it. hardest part is the ogre for sure because you have to you have to plan about um the pacing and how you manage the ads and then also making sure you're appropriately doing DPS and then also setting yourself up to restart it. Because there's this transition from the action darts coming to you, he gets the shield back, and then you suddenly have to reset to kill the ads again. And if you are not thinking about that immediately, you are you have a high chance of dying from all the stuff that can shoot you or physics you, essentially, because he starts shooting his his eyeball blast again. Um, mm-hmm. So I'd, I'd say that's like the hardest part, honestly. And then yeah. as long as you have a plan for the wizard, it's very doable, but you definitely have to have a plan. It can get out of hand really quick if you don't take care of the science. And what are the rewards for that? Bigger e Approximately three inches. Yeah, massive. No, you three, get a inches. three inches larger. Three inches? This is, a, <laughs> wow. this is extension wow. on top of the It other just happens that way? You can just grow on top of it? I thought it was a percent change, Video not games. like a static amount. Yeah. Well, that's crazy. I think it's static. 
<laughs> it was fun. It's very rewarding. And I wish there was more stuff like that in the game because it's it's exciting to do. Cool. Yeah, for sure. Do we have yeah, an ad read for me to clums, clumsily walk my way through? Um, no. You could do an ad read for uh, the DCP podcast if you'd like. You know, I want to take a little bit of time and, uh, you know, really make sure you guys know about this awesome uh, sponsor that we have called the Destiny Community Podcast. You know, they they really want more. us mm-hmm. to do this show every week. Uh, yep. You can, you know, visit them at like uh, fucking like Patreon slash DCP Live, something like that. Um, you know, YouTube, DCP Live, you know, supporting them in any of those places is really good. And you know they, I heard they're like the Tinder of podcasts. I thought Tinder already had a podcast. <laughs> really? <laughs> I gotta tune in. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's, you know, just go, go check out you know the Patreon.com slash DCP Live. You get a lot of you got a really good like stuff there. S- support them, and uh, you know, supporting them helps us. You know what we got to do too is we got to mm. get a merch store going because I want a DCP T-shirt. Like I want these things for myself, so we got to start making them. And a mug, I want a good mug. We have, we have one. Where is it? T- riddle me that, Batman. It's uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> under. You know when you copy paste the description into the YouTube videos? Yeah, it's that. Well, oh. I totally didn't do that. Like one of the weeks. <laughs> That's all right. I went back there and I did it for you. Thanks, man. Oh wow. <laughs> Professional uh, follow up yeah. there. There we go. So uh, we are going to be coming out with some new ones. Uh, there is going to be some availability of some designs for uh, um, some tattoo designs, hopefully, coming hey, soon. what is going on with the tattoo, guys? Yeah, this Ta- it's about I didn't ash my sketch. Patrick has been um, a bitch. Basically, Let's be honest. You've been I, a bitch about he it. He has been filler busting this thing, this whole thing, this whole process. He is up there talking, reading from the phone book. <laughs> do, do, do I need to go back through the Twitter DMs, find it? Because I'm the last person that said something. You that, drew that on a piece of paper with stick figures. That was an and MS snapped paint. a photo of it. That was and an sent MS it. That paint, does not sir. count. What? That is. That was. That I, yeah, no one yeah. gets October me. 11th. Last time anyone said anything in that conversation was me showing this beautiful image of a heart with. A great pattern of of like stars above it. Pope, it sounds like you're a uh, part of this to blame, man. I'm mm. sorry. <laughs> no, man. Sounds like have, both you guys time dragging said, your feet on this. I said I would whatever they whatever Holt and, and and Ash come up with, I will have tattooed on my butt, and that that's about no comment post uh, the eleventh. Posts before that are this is great. Yeah, Ash did a lot of really great sketches, uh, like really good, actually. Uh, the problem is uh, I, I really want like stars that are in a very specific pattern. Uh, oh, so they're like, yeah. Holt, I just want you to know that when we did, when we did that, I, I nearly lost my voice and we went all in. The community went all in to make mm-hmm. this happen. Mm-hmm. Um I'm I'm honestly saying if we don't we need to have the, some consequences. If uh, no, if, you need to have a date where if it's not done, that's yeah, right. like you need to yeah. set a date. We need to get done. If it's not before, done, done, done on the bonds this by too? January first, Th- then you get an even bigger one on your butt. Mm. Then I upgrade the size from quarter to a fifty cent piece. <laughs> We're no, just gonna keep $1. upgrading it every month from then on. Oh God, then it's a percentage. Yeah. Then it, then that is a percentage increase. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We're also or, or just make it that three mullet. Patrick. Yeah. See, what I happened had to, to that? To, I had to go to Texas, and I didn't have enough time to get like a proper haircut. So I was just like, none of this I adds should, up. Just, no, Texas, man, like this story, got all sorts haircuts, of holes. In it. Time. Yeah. <laughs> wedding. Texas, oh, mullet. For like wedding. these two things are like basically born. Tefty, together. did you follow through with your <laughs> with your donation? You're damn right. Senate? I did an entire stream. Of Doki Doki Literature Club, I was affected emotionally. Good. Watch. Did you did you follow through with your goals? Next week. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we have until January. Talk. Say it now on the podcast. I just I, I say we have until January first to get the thing done on the buns. 
All right. <laughs> when, egg, what about the mullet? Egg them buns. Done on the bun. Yeah, the <laughs> mullet's gonna be the, the mullet. We're gonna have to wait on that if we're wanting it to be all out natural because I don't think I can pull it off. Could we give this, you a like, mohawk? Is it really a mohawk when I still have like it doesn't even <laughs> like a nub hawk? My hair doesn't even come above the headphones here. Just like a, it's just a strip of hair on your the yeah. middle of your head, basically. All right. Well, all I know is that um, Patrick, if you don't have it done with me by January first. I agree to have on the opposite bun a ash caricature or illustration of your face tattooed. I don't want my face on your ass. Okay, well then <laughs> I January do not consent first. to this. I'm doing all I can, guys. I'm doing all I can. <laughs> See what I'm dealing with? All right, all right. Twitter questions. Yeah, Twitter questions, please. Takarito says, uh, this one's specifically for Aztec. Was your name inspired by the we, you know, we answered, answered, you already answered this <laughs> no, one. Not about like, Aztec people. <laughs> yeah. uh, Joshua Hubbard says, so happy to see Aztec Cross on the week's episode. Love watching his videos. My question is, what steps could be made, or, made to better the competitive mode in Destiny 2? Oh, man. There's so much to, to, to answer that. Um, you know, I guess the further you get into the, into the playlist, um, you just start running into now. This is for competitive, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. You, well, you start running into the things like Ursa Furiosa, like that. Those are some some really tough exotics to go against, or some like One Eye Mask. Um. You know, I I really don't have an ant like a one clear cut answer on how to fix the competitive mode because people are going to say, I want to be able to go to legend rank as a solo player. That's 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 what a lot of people want to do, and it's just not possible. Um, and if it was possible, I don't know if, if not forgotten would be as valuable as it is right now, you know, or even Luna's how, you know, um, I mean, once you get past 2100, you, you gotta have a dedicated team, uh, outside of just having, you know, better connections because things start to get super laggy because you're only matching people of similar rank. Uh, we were matching people in France, uh, and, and various other places and it was just crazy. So outside of that, you know, better quality servers would be nice. I, I sure? would, I, I would definitely say for comp, uh, reducing heavy ammo spawns because that, yeah, or a lot of people. What we do is we actually, it was, you run into nothing but streamers, so we just hop in there and say no heavy, no power. Gotcha. And so like everyone, it's almost like an understood respect. Like mm -hmm. don't pick up power, don't use Telesto. Like those are like <laughs> the two things. Like and if you do either of those things. Uh, or at least if you do the, the power thing, if you pick up power um, and didn't, and you already said to call off power, uh, then yeah, you're pretty much blacklisted. I, I really like Telesto because it just, it, it counters all of the shotgunning. Oh, it's that good. That is so prevalent. That's it's why good. I like Especially it. It's just a whole squad with Telestos. Yeah, it's a, it's a direct counter to just, you know, the play style that seems to epitomize competitive destiny. It's dirty though. It yeah, is. That's why I like it. And so, uh, yeah, a lot of people get upset about that. So those are like the, yeah. the gentleman, the gentleman rules, I guess. Hmm. <laughs> I, they used to I will, I will like yield to, I will yield to them. If someone ever like took it seriously and said no to less, I would say, okay, but the only shotguns that we can use are chaperone because we're being gentlemen. <laughs> 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 yeah. And yeah. Then no, when I you can't. get one shot by it, you're like, all right. All right. There. All right. You, got it. you hit you the got position shot. Fine. <laughs> yeah, shotties, shotties are wild, um, especially with the different roles you can get on them. Mm -hmm. um, I like to rock one with like an Icarus mod too. But I mean, mm -hmm. going up against a good top tier player on a hunter with a shotgun, <laughs> it's just it's impossible to to yeah. beat them because I mean they get the once they get the vertical gain on you, and that's just with any game, but especially Destiny. I just don't. I, it's hard to counter, uh, you know. And there's so many shotguns that have. Such good accuracy, and with Icarus on it too, it just makes it better. Mm. Oh, yeah, heavy uh, ammo. Reduce that. Reduce that by like a lot. Reduce it to like zero. <laughs> That'd be great <laughs> for comp, please. Tiny ass question for Aztec Cross: Since you're a Titan main on console, if you could choose one, would you rather have Twilight Garrison or console skating back in Destiny Two? Also, what are your thoughts on PC Titan skating right now? Uh, I guess I would have skating back, you know, because uh, Garrison wouldn't be 
what it was without skating. And so, uh, yeah, I would take skating over, over Garrison. Uh, as far as PC skating, you know, I watch like Cammy and those guys play. I mean, they, they move very swift, but I don't know. Every time I look at PC, it's just a whole nother world. <laughs> I'm like looking, I'm like, Oh my God, the clarity, every, everyone's moving around so quick too and fluid. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I hear a lot of bad things about Titans over there. Um, I guess they're meta over there, huh? Is that so? When you were saying, "Man, a, a good hunter with a shotgun is like impossible," <laughs> it's on PC. It's man, a good Titan with a, a shotgun. Good titan. Oh, or man. a Titan they, with a shotgun. Yeah, they <laughs> can just they can just who's, cover the ground. Who's macro skating so effectively? <laughs> yeah, and chances are a lot a lot of players for some reason seem to have a mask or one eyed. When I'd mask. They do, and, yeah. Uh, oh my God, it's really frustrating yeah, yeah. to go. There's up no one on your radar. Then you're dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is the what is the one-eyed mask do? Okay, so it's it's like two exotics in one. You know the hunter mask uh, that marks players or marks targets. Yeah. When you scope in on them, this one does that when they damage you, and it gives them a debuff called marked for vengeance, and they can track you for a very long time, basically until the Titan is dead or someone else damages them, then it'll swap off. Uh, and also it gives them an overshield on, on, uh, yeah, it gives them an overshield. And then whenever they kill someone, it instantly heals them. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, really, really, really fucking good. And you get a damage buff. Wait. Yeah. You also get a damage buff once you yeah. get, uh, it activated once you kill an opponent. Um, uh, so do you yeah. have to kill the opponent that was marked? Yes. Okay. And All right. So there's an that, incentive to go back and get something. to that guy and kill him. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you are on a, if you're on PC with Titan skating, getting to the people that damage <laughs> you is very fucking easy. Interesting. So, and then combine that with like shoulder charge one hitting. It's like, Oh, Oh no. <laughs> so it's like yeah, a completely different world. Uh, it is. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah, that's, I think they got to do something about Titan skating. To be honest, I feel like Titan skating on console was not that bad. It wasn't as no, fast. Not even remotely. It's not this. This yeah. is a different thing. It's, uh, yeah, it's super fast. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and not, not only that, on, you had to do like not everyone could skate well in D one either on console. It was I mean, a you're skill. Now it's a macro. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Now it's yeah. a macro. <laughs> yeah, I would. Yeah. I would very much like the change for Titan skating to be them incorporating it into the mobility stat and then make it so anyone like any class has the ability to do some form of that like if they wanted to but it would require like a massive uh input of or a, a massive amount of the mobility stat to be effective at it so then it's mm -hmm. like oh you're making the choice to do that great now you're gonna have to sacrifice recovery or you know resilience mm -hmm. one of the other stats that makes sense and, and instead of being where it's at right now, where the best way to skate is actually having zero uh, mobility. <laughs> mm -hmm. hmm. Most interesting Korean says, outside of the like button, what else would your mama approve of you slapping? <laughs> probably, the, <laughs> probably the Bible <laughs> every Sunday. <laughs> good answer. <laughs> that is a good answer. Arrow says, awesome. Guys, love his content. My question for Aztec Cross and also the DCP crew, what are your requirements slash criteria for a weapon to reach nasty levels? Oh, man. It's like what makes you go, oh, my God, this weapon is amazing. It, so, it was just, it's just, I don't know. It's the way it comes out, right? Like, there's just nasty, and then there's nasty. And it just, <laughs> it's just different variations there. Uh, I don't know. It, it just, like when Luna, the first time I played with Luna's Hal, I was like, man, this is nasty, you know? And Ace of Spades, same thing. So, I mean, I don't know. What, what about you guys? What's what's if, nasty? If I feel like I have a significant advantage using a weapon. Yeah. When I'm asked, mm -hmm. nasty. Like, I couldn't. <laughs> oh, my God. I couldn't I couldn't believe that that was really an exotic. And I remember MTash put it out the day before I did, or the same day, I think. And it was like best exotic in the game. And I was like, oh, God, I got to put out a video that says this is the worst exotic in the game. <laughs> What's this thing going to get nerfed? So, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's That's that all in caps nasty for me it's uh it's it's as if the the wow factor of a, of a gun for me and uh, especially since i mainly enjoy right now pve if it if it causes a lot of like explosions or collateral like 
damage or if it does something like a lot of DPS on a on a on an enemy because of some perk setup or something that I did, that makes me go sit back and go, wow, that's nasty. You know, if you're one hitting, you know, uh, something and it, it, before it used to take a lot. So DPS is my. Mm. Yeah, I think it's it's like everything like you guys are talking about in the overall mm-hmm. feel of the gun, like the way it looks and the sound specifically too. like, oh, like, yeah, mm-hmm. the sound plays a, like when you plays compare a Midnight Coup, which is a fantastic gun to Ace of Spades, they're both like, oh, these are great hand cannons. And one feels super clean and classy, the Midnight Coup. And then the Ace of Spades is just like a, a dirty, chunky, like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. gritty. Raw. It's going to, you know, tear yeah. everything apart type of feel to it. It's nasty. That, that sound, like the inaugural dress, I always thought was a, a good weapon, but I could never stand using oh, it because yeah. I hated the sound of it. Like it just <laughs> sounds <laughs> yeah. unsatisfying yeah. and like, sounds like, it's like, am I shooting a laser? You know, what's the deal? <laughs> yeah. What did you say it sounded like? What? A uh, toy gun. Oh, no, like yeah. water gun. You, you know when someone's got an inaugural dress from across the map. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, Rolla Sushi says, my question is, what do you hope for in future content, either as a either as a repetition of things in Forsaken, features never before seen, or even things that you don't want to see in the future that's currently in the game? Hmm. I want more loot and more specific loot. Like, I want to go, okay, this place has this really cool shotgun. I'm going to go farm that. This place has a really cool cape. I'm going to go farm that. Like, I want just to have specific loot spread out instead of, I can get the Duke everywhere. I can get this everywhere. And then they're they're definitely doing better with the Nightfall specific stuff. There's a lot Mm -hmm. more things to get from that. Mm -hmm. But I just want them to go even further with that stuff. Like, Blindwell specific stuff, like we were saying. I want them to bring, like, if we bring activities like that into future things, I want it to have specific loot for it where I have to go there and get it. Yeah, agreed. And Watts, I would agree with you on that if you also said that that specific loot gave you, it was cool, but it also gave you a specific advantage when doing said activity that it can. Yes, that is, that's a big thing as well. That's what I want. I want I mean, I want exciting loot as well. You know, I want there to be maybe there's something that drops from the blind well where that perk can only be gotten on a blind well gun. Yeah. You know, I just just like with EP, everyone wants the shotgun. Everyone want, wanted the SMG because they're just really good and they have special perks on them. Yeah, sure. I want special, interesting loot spread across places. Hmm. Uh, also, um, WTF is Osmia mentioned in chat about a PVE weapon. That's like not forgotten. Like a pinnacle yeah, PvE. Yeah. Like, that would be great for PvE players. It does make yes. sense to have something that would have to go and do all these. Like you need to do the raid on that character three times. You know, fresh, mm-hmm. fresh yeah. clears. You need to do this many strikes. You need to take care of this many heroics. Like something that solo the the shattered throne. Yeah. So like of those type of calibers to then sure. to get this like weapon. That excels extremely well in the PVE side of things. I think that'd be really sure. cool. I'd like to see more variety in the game. Um, I feel like I think I feel like Forsaken is the best version of Destiny we've ever played, but it still very much feels like we're still playing Destiny One. Like we're still kind of playing catch up to Destiny One or where we were at. And like I, I'm ready to see them start introducing like really cool new modes, like horde modes, and you know, like you know, I don't, I don't even know, like the PVE VP area, you know, like in like these broader fights, and like like I'm ready to start seeing like bigger worlds to explore, you know, mm-hmm. like like I'm ready for like the world of Destiny and like the gameplay experience of Destiny to start getting broader and more fleshed out. Mm-hmm. Ready for your destiny to double down on what destiny does well. Mm-hmm. Yep. I like Forsaken. See that? I, I, I hope to get more and see more like Forsaken. Um, armor perks and weapon perks. I'd like to see more elaboration on those those things. I mean, more weapons for sure, uh, but more in the perk pool there. Because a lot of a lot of weapons that I look at, it's always, especially when you look in that magazine department for guns, it's like, all right, I just want to get something that's got like on a shotgun. I just need something with accurate rounds, you know. And so there's not a lot of competition there 
in that in that magazine column. So if we have more perks, you know, again, that that incentivizes more grind uh, for those different weapons. More variety. Right? Yeah, more variety too. Yeah, variety in play style, variety in what feels good to you. Um, all that comes from that, right? And mm-hmm. I think that I think we've all talked about this, but having some of the creativity of the different perks that we saw in D one, but you know, have them represent themselves in different ways within Forsaken. I think we we've mentioned. I forget what they were called. I think they were called ornaments but you could do things that would change. You could choose to like hit a red bar thrall and it became an ally of yours, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Oh, the, um, the artifacts. The artifacts. Mm-hmm. the artifacts, thank you. Something, some creativity like that that makes PVE, you know, fun and, um, and, and, and you can play the content in a different way, in a unique way and just have that creativity, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trey Will says, my little brother is 12. He loves Destiny, but I'm protective of him talking to others online due to some toxic people in the community. How do I let him play without the toxic people messing up his gaming experience? Just let him go, man. Just got to let him go, dude. (laughs) I I, I loved it when I was a kid. Like When I, I picked up a headset for the first time. Uh, I looked at my friend. I was like, wait, you're telling me those guys can hear what I said? He's like, yeah. And, man, I just tore into him. Now, it wasn't a true, <laughs> true thing, you know, but it was trash talking back in Halo days. And, you know, I don't know. It's It didn't ruin us, you know. We're, we're all good adults now, you know. But I think it's it's not that big of a deal if they run into some toxic people. Just tell them to fight back, you know. Don't, don't take no trash and, and move on. Start a party mm. chat if you need to get out of that lobby. So. Interesting. I mean, there on the consoles, there's parental controls that you could set. You know, they can only talk to their friends. They can, you know, they won't see voice or voice or text chat unless it's from you know somebody that you've approved. You can go through all that stuff too. Sure. Some of it can be kind of hard to work through, so it's worth looking for a guide uh, because some of it is not named what you think it should be or doesn't do what you think the name implies. Uh, and you don't want to, for me, I didn't want to restrict my, my kids opportunity to talk to their friends, but I did want to protect them from, you know, the crazies out there, right? Like the predators and the, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's worth doing a little bit of research, you know, just like anything else that you get technology these days, iPhones or Android phones, you know, you want to protect your kids from like the really bad actors. Uh, but you don't want to restrict their ability to, you know, form friendships and talk to their friends in this new digital world. Hmm. Uh, jumping in, playing Destiny a bunch, and now uh, with Black Ops 4 out, I was like, I'm going to go play some Black Ops, right? Because I haven't played Black Ops, and yeah. people are saying it's great. Yeah, so that's a different I jump in <laughs> to Black Ops, and it's like... <laughs> putting on an old pair of like worn out slippers you know, with like the hole missing and, you know, dragging on the ground. You're like, ah, black ops lobbies. Ah, got it. Got it. I forgot about this. You know, I get into, I drop down in black uh, um, and blackout um, and you put it, I jumped in with random matchmaking for quads. And the very first thing, some guys like who all year wants to suck my, <laughs> like, that's the first thing I get from. Where's the raise your hand emote? I can't find it. This is like, <laughs> I, I, I just and then I it like kicked it, it like it was like riding a bike. It kicked in. I'm like, mm. they had that in PUBG too. Remember? Oh yeah, I do. And then the guy, the guy's like, the guy got weirded out and left. <laughs> so it's like it's like you got to like old cod call uh, uh, shit talking came back to me like just like that, and I'm yeah. Like, the guy who puts the stereo on, yeah, just has oh, music yeah. blasting. Oh, in the oh, that's lobby. the worst part. Is singing the along with it or something, or, or rapping yeah. along with whatever he's listening to. The music to. or the yeah. breathing is like oh, the breathing, you know, the, the oh, crap the talk. That's easy, but the <laughs> freaking shut up. I'm gonna be somebody honest. that's playing the. the I'm sorry. Go I'm gonna be honest. Anytime I've played and there's like an open lobby, as soon as I hear anything, I'm like, ah, eh, mute. 
And like, yeah. honestly, I mute everyone almost I'm immediately. Like, I'm never yeah. interested in hearing people's weird, like, just like you said, Pope, if somebody comes in like that, I'm like, well, I'm muting everybody. I'm, I'm keeping this <laughs> up for like, for me, but that's how I am. I know some people sure. enjoy that aspect, the, the trash talk right there. But for me, I'd like, I have no interest in the, in that aspect of it. And honestly, for, for, um, for the questions, was it his brother or his son? His brother. His, his brother? brother? Like, oh, brother. I think it's a case by case basis and has to see how he reacts to that stuff. Like I, I personally, like if I had a son who was 12, I wouldn't want my son talking to people like that on the internet personally for me. I'd be like, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you have to turn off the party chat and you're going to have to wait another couple years, maybe have a little more social skills developed before that becomes a reality for you. But I, 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 it's a case by case basis. And how like people can it handle is, it. It really is a case by case basis. And it's like, you know, you can always leave. If you go on LFG, you get a team together for something and people are being assholes, like you can always leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think sure. that's important to let him know, like, you're not stuck in here. You don't have to play with these people. You don't have to deal with anything that you're uncomfortable with dealing. If you're uncomfortable, just just leave. You don't owe them anything. Just just yeah, get out of there. You'll find you, a different group. I remember girls playing, you know, girls get it bad. Like in Call of Duty, I mean, in Halo, I mean, I, I, I want to say that I don't know how you guys put up with it, to be honest with you. Um, girls in general, I, mean, I feel like every time you use your mic, like anytime I watched a girl speak up in a chat, like every dipshit in the lobby would be like, oh, yeah, you want to go out? You know, you want to touch. The thing is with that is if there's toxic people in a lobby, they're going to be toxic to people no matter what, whether you talk and you have an accent you sound like you're not American. You sound like you're of a particular location, region, background. Okay. They <laughs> jump on that anyway. Like, there's not going to yeah. be some really amazing, awesome dude in a lobby, and then a girl talks and he turns into a complete asshole. Like, he was an asshole the whole time. So he's probably doing sure. that to lots of other people. Sure. That's a good point. Um, I feel like I didn't know if you had any specific advice for girls out there that are... that are. That I didn't are- use my microphone. I don't like playing with people. <laughs> I never did. When I was playing COD, I was like, I'm going solo and I'm going to try and just shoot everybody. It's going to be great. I you never. Didn't use a mic? Not really. I, the only time that I've done that was I got to know a group of players in Guild Wars through just playing. They seemed like cool people. So then I would go and talk to them. And I think that's unfortunate because I feel like they're a big part of, you know, playing my experience, at least playing Call of Duty and Halo was the teamwork aspect and jumping in and going you know having that few first seconds where you're like all right guys are we gonna we're we gonna get this you know and then who's got a mic and um and then talking and and some of my best friendships coming out of uh call of duty were in random playlists of people that i just met with their mic on and um it's interesting it's it's it feels like it's you're missing out with my son i feel like i'm i've as a true gamer dad I feel like I've been preparing him for an open mic for his whole life. Like, I, like I, I, I've been teaching that kid how to talk crap, um, you know, back and forth. So I'm hoping that he can hold his own. But I'm, a, I'm, a, I, I, it's unfortunate the 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 kinds of people and what you hear in lobbies. And I don't know how you prepare them for that, other than just having them kind of jump in. For me, my concerns know. weren't like the trash talkers. My concerns were the predators. Yeah, the weirdos. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. the real yeah. weirdos. That, they're there, yeah. and that's why I used parental controls, mm-hmm. and I still use them actually to some extent. I think yeah. it's just the thing of like, if you're ever uncomfortable in something, mute them or leave. And you have to kind of teach them to know what that is for them. And there's a lot of kids who aren't confident in just being like, "I don't like you guys. I'm leaving," and they feel like they have to stay and deal with that. Just let them know, like, it's okay to not have to deal with that. Mute mute them. Keep playing. The mute option is great. If yeah. Even if you're playing with a group of, say you're doing a raid, and one of them is an asshole, but the others are actually pretty okay, just mute the one guy. You don't need I've to done that on my stream. Muted individuals. They're calling out the plate, and you're like, they're like, boring-ass bird, and you're... I'm in the middle of a story here, man. <laughs> <laughs> The call a nice look. I gotta thank these subs here real quick. So you gotta you guys figure this out on your own. Uh, Justice Beaver says you can only have one type of food for the rest of your life, including the beverage style. So what will it be? 
and he gives some choices. Japanese, Mexican, Italian, Chinese, German. Japanese. Japanese, all right. I don't, I don't even need Japanese. to hear any other country. Yeah. You start with Japanese, we can just end it there. We're yeah, good. Just start there and there. We would like to hear the list, though. Okay, you guys can figure this out. <laughs> um, Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably go Japanese food. <laughs> it's delicious. I don't, I don't even know. Uh, I guess Oriental. I mean, my, my mom's side is Oriental, and I really liked it when I did have it. So I guess I could I could settle on that one. But I would go again, Japanese. Getting... My only problem with Japanese is the beer. Like their beer selection is at least amazing. the stuff that I've had. Briar, have you tried it's Japanese amazing. whiskey? No, I've had sake. Okay, did you, you had Briar? good sake before? I need you to go try some Japanese I've had whiskey. Sake at a Japanese restaurant. Was the sake warm? See, there's like house yes. sake. Okay, and they then, serve it so... any other way. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, there's some the, really good. The only sake. beers I've ever had are like Kirin and Sapporo, and they're both good beers, but there's not enough variety, you know. I, I mean, so many. <laughs> there, there's a lot. There really is, yeah. there. and it's good. Yeah. It's All right, then really I'm going good. Japanese too. I'm going to take your word for it. Don't see <laughs> me wrong here. No, they have a. What's the? Um, <laughs> hey, uh, Watts. What's that Japanese? Um, it's it's a liquor. It's it's not sake. It's it's a it's a comes um, and it's like a smoky milky color um what the hell? but it's unrefined it's like unrefined sake um it's like a rice beer not rice wine i'm like oh, oh, God, um, i'm gonna rice. find the name of it but there is it's some rice wine plum no wine. it's not plum wine no it's not i'll plum i'll, I'll get the name of it but it's uh um, so much fucking better why <laughs> i know <laughs> Yes. What did I? What, how did I phrase it? it? Doesn't matter. No, no. We. No. Hey, Briar. How the, hey, hey, remember how we need to have like highlights of stuff? Like this. You know, yeah, that's a, that's, that's a yeah, great that's one. Right there. There. Mm. Put this, I don't understand put what you guys it. are talking about. I'm talking about a drink. <laughs> what are you guys drinking? <laughs> that good, mm. good. Uh, Not white, milky, smoky stuff that comes and something. <laughs> it's Ogie sees it's smoky. Oh, sorry. You Mr. might have something going on. <laughs> Check your <laughs> that was, that was pretty cool. If it's smoking. I'm gonna look it up, and you guys are gonna feel dumb. Uh, Mr. Levin said, "If you only had 24 hours to live, what would you? Japanese. What would be on your to-do list? <laughs> Japan? <laughs> Probably yeah. Let's go Japanese again. Wait, are you answering this question? 24 yes. hours. So you're yeah. gonna spend 12 of your last 24 hours on it's Earth? On it's only a 10. It's only a 10-hour flight. Oh, I'm sorry." Sometimes nine. That makes a huge difference. <laughs> yes. That's yes. actually a good amount of time. You know, I got a solid 14 hours left to just go. Yeah. I can hand. catch up on some we anime. We could just eat you know? everything. Uh, I'd be um, playing Red Dead 2. That's what it'd be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to die without playing this game. Maybe take a nap. I feel like dying is going to be exhausting. I want to be well rested for it. So, yeah, it depends on what the death is, right? If it's a. I don't know, a stressful one? You're going to be stressed before it happens? Yeah, you just a plane you crash on the way to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Not if I go at the beginning of the 24 hours. Mm -hmm. I have 24 hours left to live. Anybody else? 24 hours to live? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. That's that's a deep one for me. <laughs> so the question is 24 hours to live and you can do anything? What yeah. do you do? Um, I... I, you know, hang out with my family. I mean, you build a time machine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> time. live your life. Yeah, we go into another. We go into a, the uh, another universe and live our lives yeah. happily ever after. I gotta know who's who's giving me this information first of all. Right? Who's right. the con? Who's like, the well, contract? how do I know that this person telling me I got twenty four hours to live is giving me <laughs> factual information? Is this That's coming true. from Anon? Whatever his name, <laughs> Jason Shreer. <laughs> then maybe I'll buy it. <laughs> Jason, did, did Jason Shreer post about this one? Right. Mm. Mm. The um, answer is Ferrari Friday. Ferrari Friday. I put, Friday. I, I put the I put the drink in the chat. Easy. Oh, that'd be actually an awesome thing to do. Is rent a Ferrari. Yeah. And crash Steal it. one. Hey, you're gonna die. Who cares? Yeah. Right. Maybe that's how I die in 24 hours. <laughs> awesome. High awesome televised taste. taste. High speed <laughs> exuberance in a Ferrari? Yes. Now we're talking. That's how I want to go out. 
at 205 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Smoky Play says, for the crew, what socially accepted trend have you participated in that you will surely look back on in five years with shame? Uh, so five years, this thing is not going to be socially accepted? I guess I so. I feel shame. Hmm. Yeah, this is going to be a hard How about <laughs> eating 15 <laughs> pounds of crawdads? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna like, I was going to try and open this one up. Is there anything that used to be socially ex- socially acceptable that you used to do that you feel ashamed about now? Yes, probably. And when I was in it? high school, trash uh, talking in cod lobbies. Everybody, <laughs> thought, everybody <laughs> thought it was cool to do whippets. Now I'm like, eh, I like my brain cells. All I don't right, know. Yeah, that makes sense. That adds <laughs> up. Doing drugs. I mean, in general, I I think uh, yeah, it uh, depends on the drug. Well, no, not for me. I mean, I, I feel like I've gotten to a point in my life where just most drugs are just, just. I like being sober, man. I I, I feel like when Pope, people people were you a drug when I was younger, second favorite way to be. <laughs> man, I don't know, man. When like when people were young, when I was younger, maybe I'd have to. You know, people would drink or whatever to get to 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 have a good time. I feel like the older I get, I I want to be able to experience and enjoy the the time that I'm with people and not like, you know my face in like a bunch of Cheetos because I've got the munchies or I like to be able to like have a you conversation have interesting, with You have interesting conversations. Um, you can know. also have your face in a bunch of Cheetos while sober too. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the Cheetos really matter. I did buy like Cheetos 10 is- <laughs> packets of Cheetos. Sorry if I insulted drugs in general, but I'm just saying my personal preference is to be sober. Hmm. Anybody else got something? I, oh yeah, I can't. I honestly can't think <laughs> of something that I've done socially. <laughs> oh, or that was socially, socially acceptable, acceptable, but is not going to be acceptable in like five years. Like, I feel like I would already be like, "Huh, that's actually pretty weird." I'm probably not going to do that. Mm. Yeah, I feel like I've either done something acceptable or not acceptable. Not something that was acceptable that is not yeah. acceptable. I mean, I there know, were words that we used to weird. use as children that are definitely not acceptable anymore. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Like the uh, the candy that looked like a cigarette. That's not very acceptable. <laughs> I don't have that any was shame funny. about that though. I I don't have shame about it. They were delicious, and I yeah, them. I never got those. Like I got those on the tail end of where they were still making them. Doki Doki they were like stream. <laughs> That's what it is. Five years I regret the Doki Doki. Oh, Definitely yeah. socially unacceptable. Stream that game. You know, Tefty. Now that you finished this podcast, you finished Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yes, I did. Like Did that game really to me it has so much Witcher DNA, I like Witcher it. Three DNA in it. Uh, oh. I don't know what you're talking is about. That, is, what game is that? Sparked. <laughs> All right, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering if it sparked like any desire to go back to that game. Uh, the desire it has it's sparked so much. is to revel in horse nut musk in Red Dead Redemption Two. <laughs> mm, that musk horse is the best nut musk. I will be. Perf- uh, I'll be a fine purveyor on the online experience. You're gonna kill your horse. And I wonder you if the that. horses are I gonna have to different... kill my horse. <laughs> I wonder if the horses are gonna have different like size and length nuts. I hope so. They should, because I, that's how I'm gonna pick my horse. Do you think you can name? Yeah, that's how. That's how. It, that's how you tell how old the horse is. Has it? Has it been like announced that you can name your horse? Can you give it a name like in the game? Oh, I don't know. Because I yeah, got mine picked out sure. from playing Odyssey. What is it? It's gonna be Smokadies, uh-huh. smoke Smokadies, Smokadies, the uh, of the heavy blunt. Yes, not Spartan kick. I, no, I gotta say the no. Assassin's Creed horses are pretty robust. You can just basically jump those off at any height cliff, <laughs> and uh, they f- kind of flop over, but they get right back up. They're okay. Have you killed one though? Uh, no. Uh, if you get high you enough, kill a horse. if you get high enough, yeah. it will actually die. I mean, it's it, it it's like. You know, it makes a noise and it's like <laughs> lays down. You can't call Phobos. You're like, oh my god, and this happened to me, and I was like, I felt mortified. I'm like, I'm gonna have to reload my save, and then I walked away, and then sudden resurrection syndrome. Boom. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Yeah. But it can actually well, get to thank the point. God for Phobos. Yeah, you can actually get to the point where the horse will like, straight up be dead until you go enough distance for you to recall it, <laughs> which is a little strange, you know? It's it's, it's as strange as why do you take no fall damage, like. Because after level two, on my feet, they did fall damage in Origins, and it sucked. <laughs> You're right, man. It <laughs> sucked. The the also, <laughs> video games. <laughs> video games. Uh, Biswalker Sif says, "With Halloween coming up, what's your favorite scare prank you've ever seen or performed?" 
For example, I've seen a large spider on a pulley system drop down on customers in a mall while they looked at specific merchandise. Uh, you guys ever pulled a good prank? Like a good scare prank? Yes. I'm bad at pranks. When I was yes. when I was younger, uh, like probably 12 or 13, I was a pretty I was a prankster when I was like 12 or 13. Uh, we lived in this house in Minnesota, and during the summertime, it'd get pretty like dark at like night. And I heard my dad yell out. He's like, oh, "I gotta turn off the water." And I was like, I was playing like Mortal Kombat, and I heard that, and I was like, "Now's my chance." So <laughs> I ran outside, and at the time, the um, the growth of the bushes were pretty deep, so you had to go like into this very dark spot to turn off the faucet outside or the um, you know the uh, the hose connector. So I went in there, crouched down as like a 12 or 13 year old. My dad just, you know, coming up and I was like, rah, rah, you know, that type of thing. <laughs> Scared the shit out of him. No joke. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, he remembers it and said, I almost punched you right in the face. <laughs> it, w- it could have been bad. So, yeah. I mean, I've jumped out at my mom, but she did slap me. So. <laughs> oh, God. Maybe not as funny. Her auto reaction is to just like punch and slap everything that scares her. Okay. So okay. you end up getting pranked. The pranker gets pranked. Yeah. Yeah. My life was in danger during Can't that time. <laughs> I mean, I've done stupid stuff like saran wrap on the toilet. Ooh. Yeah, that's not very scary. No. That's, that's what that's, I'm saying. It's not how I mean, we. I guess somebody's got to clean it up, which is kind of yeah. scary. <laughs> One time I used to work at Staples when I was a kid and there was like the girls who counted the cash every morning did it behind this like metal door. And there's actually two metal doors. (laughs) Ha ha. Joke's on you. Series. So what I decided to do is drop pennies on the ground and I'd kick them so that they slide under both metal doors. And when they hit the, the um, wall of the room they were in, they'd pop up in the air and make a ting, ting, ting. And then there's just pennies flying in there. So I do that about every five minutes and walk away. And they were absolutely convinced for about two weeks that the place was haunted. And that there was like a ghost in there throwing pennies around. Like in in only the hysterical way that two like 18 year old girls can manage. Do you know what I mean? No, I don't know what you mean. It was good. They were really convinced of it. Like for two weeks. Did you like break it to them? Uh, they caught me doing it after two weeks. Uh, <laughs> Somebody came out the door just as I was kicking it. No, no I was so never going to break it to him. If you're a prank to <laughs> uh, you know, like little stuff. I mean, we she she's mainly the pranker. You know, what's the the faucet thing? She'd take one of her little hair rubber bands and mm, wrap it around the, the faucet. Oh, you put yeah. the faucet on, spray it. Yeah, it's like little stupid things like that. We had we had one. Uh, it was about a six month standoff there where we were just getting each other and we were just <laughs> dunking ice water on each other in the shower and so you'd be showering and you're just looking up and you're just ready to, the moment you see it coming over you just have to deflect it as quickly as you could and uh that was happening a long time and then every now and then she'll she'll reach in the shower and uh throw the hot water on so uh, yeah my wife's real bad about that one that one. <laughs> yeah, that'd actually be a funny one just reach in and grab somebody on the shoulder while they're taking a shower. that would be terrifying wait until they're like washing their me. face hey. oh that's <laughs> the worst because i burned my washing... eyes washing yeah. my face being paranoid about stuff i just like buddy wa- like when it, i i don't know maybe i'm the only one but whenever i wash my face and i close my eyes in the shower there's always that there's m- demons. thought hmm. in the back of your head that you're like this is the time <laughs> This yeah. is it. It's never happened before, but <laughs> fuck you, Alfred Hitchcock. And... <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Cobalt says, if we came into contact with aliens, what one movie would you show them to help them understand what human culture and experience <laughs> is like? Oh shit! What's the movie that you show aliens as it's first? Bill contact? and Ted's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> Good pick. Good pick. I think that's a good one. Oh, that's great. Uh, uh, impress them with our time travel. <laughs> Behold our science. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't know. Uh, Planet of the Apes. Uh, <laughs> that could have an effect. <laughs> what would that tell them? <laughs> this is how we started. We are here now. I'm going to show them a rival. Because it's about aliens visiting Earth. It's like, it's already happened, man. 
not yeah you guys you're not, you're not, you're not that, you guys already know this aliens. other dude's language yeah it's, show him alien with sigourney or no show aliens <laughs> with sigourney weaver oh yeah have her just kick an alien ass and be like look <laughs> one of us yeah. that's one <laughs> yeah you know how many it takes <laughs> one <laughs> they're in the walls you know a movie scared Pokemon the crap movie. out of me? The first one. Mm. The Pokemon the first movie? Pokemon movie. The first Pokemon movie. Is that to show nice. that we keep aliens as no, our... No, we, ha- we have to see if the aliens can cry. Oh. <laughs> okay. I've never seen that movie. Uh, you'll cry. I don't care about Pokemon. You'll cry. That very much. <laughs> you will cry. Mm, uh, really? Deep Lawless says, the sugar go on grits. Wait, wait cross, is a correct did you say yours? Oh, I said independence. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, independence. Independence. I mean, it's, a, yeah. it's a good one, too. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. It is the opening yeah. scene. Oh, no, no, no. No, not the opening scene. Cut to, just cut to the end. <laughs> cut right? to the it was a rough just, one. <laughs> that opening the original scene. or the remake? That happened a couple years ago. I didn't watch the remake. Okay. Yeah, good man. I, I was going to say, you know what movie scared the crap out of me that would be one of these joke movies that you show the aliens? was Signs. When I saw that, like it freaked oh. me out. Oh. What's in the box? Yeah, that no. one's, that one's Maybe that'll just give you answers. What's what's in the box was was seven. Oh, no, not science. Yeah, science was the one where they were allergic to water. Yeah, and they and corn fields. Spoilers! <laughs> oh my god! Covered in water. Seriously, now I didn't, now I'm not going to even need to watch. It's it. The worst planet to come to. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. <laughs> it was without a doubt the dumbest set of aliens. <laughs> 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 uh, D flawless says, "Does sugar go on grits?" No. 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 Just butter and Tony. Butter, butter and toast. Yeah. Mm. A little pepper. Like, yeah, a little. Just more Tony. I, I didn't have grits until I was in adult in life. Was not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> grits are good. good. Grits. Mm. Grits are good. It's the grits combination are... of everything in it. Yeah. You got to put a lot of butter in there and with eggs and um, and like a sausage. So you got to ta- you got to put grits. a bunch of shit that tastes good in there. To make them taste, no, it's like the whole the whole combination. It's like it's a like, meal. It's like, do you like plain ass mashed potatoes? Do you like plain yes. ass soup? It's just you water. like plain ass mashed potatoes. Just yes. potatoes. Yeah, mashed, mashed potatoes. If, if they're really good, yeah. If they're yeah. Good. potatoes are pretty good, man. Just yeah. plain ass potatoes, nothing yes. in them. No, yes. well, yeah, no, no, no. You gotta shit. season them. Come on, you, yeah. you gotta. No, even if they're just you're plain, not eating, they still taste good though. No, I get, like a baked potato is basically just a plain potato. My brain is immediately thinking about the lack of salt. Pepper and butter in there. Yes, if, if it's on there. Sour cream. Chai. And if it has yeah. not been like mashed it. to a creamy consistency, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be annoyed. I'm sending I'm it back. A, I'm a tefty on this one. I would actually like to change my, uh, ch- change what movie I want to show the aliens. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested in this. Pick the pretty bad one. <laughs> I would like to show them uh, basically any of the Jackass movies. All right. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah. Hmm. Grits, I feel like, is one of those foods that people ate because they were ultra poor and then somehow stayed in the in our diet, like haggis or like I don't know haggis what else. What's really something that people diet. ate? No, haggis is not a. It's it's mm. shoe leather. It's, it's one of those foods that it's only it only existed because people were just so fucking poor back in the day. But that's but a, somehow uh, it's managed to kind of stay in a tradition. That's you know? how like no. pizza was made, man. Yeah, I disagree with you. I I have very 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 fond memories of uh, my my grandma's from Texas, and uh, mm-hmm. waking up in the morning and having um, grits and um, and oak fried okra and mm, um, I love okra, you know, eggs and I, love- I, I just that's it's it's part of the the culture and I, I I've always loved them. I I think they taste great. But I don't. I don't think it has anything to do. with My family grew up. My grandma was very wealthy. I don't think it had no, no, anything. I'm to saying do. like way back in the day. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying like t- <laughs> five years ago. I'm saying like <laughs> you know, like the 1800s. What would you regret you know? eating five years later if you eat it today? <laughs> <laughs> Almost anything from Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, anything Reverend- from Taco Bell. <laughs> Reverend Jimmy Love says, what is the most annoying habit that other people do? Man, if I go to the movie theaters and people are like talking. Oh, that's a bad one. Uh, no. no, I definitely have a tough time. Oh, my God. You ever have a complete uh, stranger just, just start talking about how bad their day has been? And like they tell you all sorts of personal shit. Like you're at the 
Did you ask them or how plane? they are? No. I okay, had headphones seven. in. I was not even paying attention <laughs> to like, oh, shit, this person's talking to me. Okay. Oh, shit. Let's put these back on. <laughs> well, I hate that people when people talk to somebody else or on the phone loud how, enough how, knowing, I know. how do I knowing, knowing that uh, somebody else is close enough that they're hearing their they speak loud enough to hear the converse so that you can hear their conversation so that you can commiserate with how bad their day is or they're like performing for you. I don't even you. know if it's, I don't even know if it's that. Up. How about people who yell into cell phones to get better reception? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what all old people do. All <laughs> people. people that talk on their phone like this. Uh, I, audio listeners, I am holding my, hook, <laughs> my, my phone just up with in a one horizontal hand state. Like but, but if you're if you're dri yeah. if they're driving right and they're thinking this isn't breaking the cell phone law yeah like yeah but, but no they do this here? because of all the fucking reality <laughs> shows because to illustrate that the person is on the phone and and to also hear the phone call without a weird setup they just turn the speakerphone on that's why the reality shows do it this isn't how you talk on it no normal person should talk on their phone like this okay i don't Stop think i've ever it. seen anybody do that I've seen enough people do I've it. I've seen people do yeah. it. It aggravates me. Like, yeah. no shit. Okay. I've never seen it. I have a yeah. new one that has formed recently. Okay. Ooh. Americans and don't understand roundabouts. Mm. <laughs> right. Yeah. They just this is don't. True. This is they true. just don't so get it. I freaking love the roundabout. They're just like, there will be there will be no one in the roundabout. The person in front of me is like, whoa, we gotta stop. Mm -hmm. Like, no, there's no one you go. There's no one just, in the roundabout. You don't have to look both ways. It's a roundabout. It's a circle. Go in the circle. Yeah, it's yeah. If you're in the good. circle, people do tend to freak better out not a stop. Bit around about. No, no, no. <laughs> God, no. It's not. I, no. Well, no. there's no stop Round. sign into the circle. There's yield. There's yield lines. There's, yeah, there's, yield. it's a circle. The multi-lane roundabout no is especially confusing to people. It is especially. <laughs> like, that's like a whole other layer of complexity. People don't understand anything about it. It's it's yeah. pretty funny watching. If you're in an area that doesn't really have roundabouts and one gets put in, it's very funny watching it. Just be aware because you might die if you're not paying attention. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's very few roundabouts in, in the South. And, uh, and uh, they decided to put one on campus, my old school. And... <laughs> I, I felt like I was going to die many times because I would be going around the roundabout and someone just turns left on it. I'm like, what are you doing? Yes, I've seen that many times. Oh <laughs> yeah, I love the roundabout. Uh, it's um, so efficient. When people understand. It's assuming, assuming that, yeah. When people understand, it's everybody. extremely efficient. Play by the rules. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, my gym, there's, there's, this, uh, there's the locker room and then the bathrooms are right there in the locker room. And there's always this this one or one older gentleman, um, and he doesn't like to wear clothes ever when he's in there, and so which is completely fine because it's a locker room. But he he's like brushing his teeth and doing his hair while all in the nude. <laughs> and nobody said anything about it, and uh, but you know, anyways, that's uh, that's pretty much the only thing that kind of gets to me. A little pet peeve. <laughs> yeah, because I'm just walking in to to go to the restroom. And it's like Jesus. Come on, man! You're, you're doing your hair again, naked again today. <laughs> Every day. You're gonna mess it up when you put your shirt on. You gotta put the shirt on, then do your hair. Well, and then you're at the locker room, and the guys, you know, they have that blow dryers and stuff. And you got these these old men that are in there. They're they're getting they're they're they naked. The no shame, man. They're, no they're, 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 shame. they're just going. <laughs> no shame at all. Oh, oh, yeah. all one out. leg is like up on the on the it's wall. Like, <laughs> you come around the corner, they look at you like. Why are you looking yeah. at me, dude? And it's like, <laughs> not trying to look at you. It's just, you know. Yeah. Why are you buck naked right now? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you drying your balls? Don't need Why to. Why are your it. balls hitting your kneecaps? I mean, come on. <laughs> what a guy at a golf course who used to do that. He's in the locker room at the golf course. And it, it was like a public, like kids, like it was like a municipal <laughs> golf course. It wasn't like a private, like locker room. It was weird. I think at that point, you just don't give a shit. You're like of the... No, that's, that's the way I, I, yeah. I see it. I only yeah. hope to get to that point in my life where I'm old enough Man. where I give zero... It's aspirational, fuck. right? It is. Get like, you point. have zero <laughs> fucks about whatever you do. You're like, I'm old. I'm going to yeah. die maybe tomorrow. I'm good. <laughs> Great. Is, you think it's just like a light switch that turns on, or is it something you got to work for for your entire life? I don't know. 
Gray yeah, says, you continually you know work toward happens? not giving a shit. O- old people yeah. at the gym are the human honey badgers. They just don't care. <laughs> sure, they don't care they don't anymore. Care They're anything. old. They're just like, whatever. Uh, old people in general, like at, at I, a certain point, I, you I just get like, it. you're like, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, you've, you're done. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> Nothing's phasing you. <laughs> Nothing at that point, right? Hmm. Uh, Heeb says, there are 40 million kangaroos in the world. And eight million people in Ohio. <laughs> if you moved every kangaroo into Ohio and sealed the borders like the Hunger Games, who would be victorious? The, the humans or the kangaroos? The kangaroos. Both kangaroos. sides are intent on eliminating the other side. Kangaroos. And the humans oh, definitely the kangaroos. Use the weapons they already have in their possession. Kangaroos. No Still outside kangaroos. Help is possible. Pretty sure the it's kangaroos like, oh. have tactical nukes. <laughs> Right. I'm going to say the people of Ohio have a lot of weapons. Of weapons. What's that really bowed up kangaroo, though? Y'all seen it? Yes. It, yeah. Yeah. Who's boxing? Just, yeah. Yep. Jack yeah. kangaroo. Yeah. That's the one you wouldn't want to run into. How many of them no. are getting imported? <laughs> all of 40 them. 40 million of them. All of them. They're all jacked. You're assuming they're all jacked? <laughs> all of them. They're all like, Dude, I've never seen this. like a, a whimpy a like, looking kangaroo. This, this is the type of kangaroo, like, I could imagine, I had this conversation a while ago with chat, like six months, maybe a year ago, about how this kangaroo would be the star of a Saturday morning cartoon in glasses, and it'd be like some sort of G.I. Joe kangaroo type of cartoon. Because if you mm-hmm. see it, it is, it looks like a cartoon. It's amazing. So... Have you ever seen one attack a human? Like they're brutal and they're yes. so strong. They're aggressive, yeah. man. That's why that guy yeah, like was very, very had to punch him. Like knocked him in the face, and yeah. the kangaroo was like, "What? You, you what, mate? You just <laughs> he tried to bitch slap him, but he you yeah. just punched me. I'm a kangaroo." <laughs> There's a great video online of a kangaroo and like some kind of like big mascot hanging out next to him, and the kangaroo just like looks over and then just puts him in a headlock. <laughs> <laughs> Oh he's in this big like mascot costume and he's just getting beat beat down by a kangaroo. That's, <laughs> That's funny. The guy died. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a horrible, horrible I'm just kidding. I don't know if he died. <laughs> okay. I don't know, man. Like 40 million kangaroos is a lot. If we were organized, if we got the people of Ohio together, all 8 million of them, had them armed and prepared for the kangaroo invasion, I think we could take them. But if it was like a night drop, like they dropped from parachutes out of the air in the middle Stuff. of the night. Forty million kangaroos. They're playing. They're, they're playing ramp. Fortnite, and they know how to build, and we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, screwed. we're in trouble. It really depends on the setup, man. We're gonna need a follow up. There needs more information on that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. When do, you want to do like one more, one more question? Uh, yeah. We have only got two more. Can I do both of them? Yeah, yeah. I think maybe, we got eight thirty. Hard maybe. close. Julio says, DC crew and guests plane crash into the mountains in the middle of a blizzard. Won't be rescued for days, no transportation, 50 miles for help. Who do you send for help, and who do you eat first? Uh, oh, okay, good, Briar. Reading Briar first. Oh, I will fight you. To the- <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> oh, we're eating Briar Briar's first. really tall. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Lots of meat We're going to have to plan mm-hmm. out. We're going to have to plan it out. Two of you may die trying to get this done. <laughs> That's okay. Cool. It's That's fine. Okay. We're eating. We're all work together. Yeah. We're working together. <laughs> what do you do? Yeah. Um, I'm apparently think... going for help. <laughs> 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 I'm running. I'm going to hit the it's, ground running. It's, it's, it, we we kind of decided that rather quickly, Briar. I don't know if you have time to get away. <laughs> We immediately crash. We're all busting out like the the silverware and the china. It's just like, all right, start, I'm not very start. fast either. I think <laughs> it's over. We, don't, we, don't, we don't send Patrick. We don't send Patrick because he's a he's a Boy Scout. He knows how to make. He's from the South, so he knows how to make we food. We still have sandwiches on the plane, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, at, Cross. You're going. You're going for help. I know. That way, oh, if you're lost in the in in and die on the way to the, we can still do the podcast. Oh, gotcha. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Could have said seem seem reliable, seem trustworthy. Oh yeah, no, you seem really like yeah, reliable. That's right, it. Right, right. I was a uh I got to Life Scout. So yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So I'm Good. kind of relaxed. So by order of ranking, I'm not gonna work that much. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stick back here. Okay. I'll let well you're not very reliable and you don't look tasty, so 
I think you're safe. <laughs> but <laughs> the problem, I, I, actually, I changed my answer because who's going to read Twitter questions? <laughs> uh, we're not. Maybe going we'll all Brian. inherit some of Briar's skills. Ooh, oh, by like consuming you, him. By consuming <laughs> my heart. <laughs> mm. Good thoughts. Good thoughts, Watts. You definitely need to be the dark class of D3. <laughs> Uh, Ringo the Dingo says, in a karaoke contest amongst the DCP crew, who would sing, what song would you sing and who would win? Oh, uh, Tefty would sing. Uh, we Wrong would all answer, sing. Pope. Here's the thing. We've done karaoke, and we're amazing as a group. There's no way you're <laughs> sure. breaking up this group, Ringo. We all do it oh, together. Country road. Take me home. Exactly. We were doing. We're going to sing that song, yes. John Denver. Yes, country we're going to sing Country Road. Mm -hmm. Again. Again. <laughs> again. <laughs> Over and over again. Yeah. Over that's and over. It. Never that's ends. The, that's the question. Beautiful. That's, that's you, Pat. I, uh, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm impressed at our ability to just absolute bullshit. Yeah, you are good. I'm a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are good. <laughs> I'm long past impressed because uh, we've been doing it for a while. Uh, I, I expect it at this point. It's uh, impressive, man. Oh my gosh! We anyway, thanks this? for thanks for watching <laughs> this episode. You'll find uh, more of me. I am at Holton underscore yt on Twitter. You can find me doing uh, Twitch streaming on Twitch.tv slash Holton. I've also started uploading YouTube videos, like weapon reviews, and I don't know uh, stuff. I still I still think that fifteen pounds of crawfish is uh, fine for a single serving. Fight me. Can you guys please you tweet Holtz your thoughts on 15 pounds of crawfish? Can and, anybody um, take a picture of 15? Like, I'm having trouble yeah, like, yeah. picturing. I, I can go get you a picture. Of I would also, like that. send him pictures yeah, of other it. things that are also 15 pounds that you shouldn't eat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is also something that we need he to see. He needs to be <laughs> tweeted at like lots of photos that are 15 pound items that you shouldn't consume in one sitting. <laughs> Or at all. <laughs> uh, or at all. Thank you. For, thank you, everybody. That's your job. If you, I don't see lots of those on Twitter, please. Uh, yeah. all right. Teft, you want to go next? Yes. I'm Teft Teft. You can talk to me at Teft on Twitter. Catch my streams, twitch.tv forward slash Tefty Teft. I typically start my streams around 6 p.m. Pacific time, West Coast, California time. But tonight, I'll be playing some Red Dead. I'm very excited about it. Ooh, nice. Oh, yes. So nice. nice. It's happening. Uh, I'm Briar Rabbit. You can find, you talk to me over on at the Briar Rabbit on Twitter. Uh, I will be starting Red Dead tomorrow. My streaming has been a little weird because it's I'm knee deep in photo season, uh, but when I have time, I will be streaming. Uh, and that's going to clear up in the next two weeks or so. So we'll be back to a more regular schedule, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I am Miss Five Thousand Watts. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Just look for Miss 5,000 Watts, and I'll be playing Red Dead tomorrow, and I'm going to be dressed mm. as a cowboy. Nice. Ooh. I bought a hat from Amazon. I bought a hat? <laughs> be great. Nice. <laughs> and I'm Mastercross. You can find me. me anywhere on YouTube and Twitter and then Twitch on Astercross. Awesome. And, and you um, can go longer. You are a guest on here. You can You can. You can, you can that's pretty much that shout the out. The only Love places it. I'm at. Well, let me, let me do that. Let me do it. Let me do it for you then. Um, you need to, if you don't know this man's content, you need to go over there, find him on YouTube. You will uh, thank us later. It is good quality content and something you should all make sure to go over there. Hit that, hit that subscribe button like you. What? <laughs> Slap that like button. Yep. Yeah, there you go. And uh, make sure to hit subscribe. This guy's uh, talented, funny, and we're happy to have him in the Destiny community. Let's give him some love. Thank you so much. Um, this has been uh, Pope Bear. You can find me on Twitter at Hope Bear. Make sure to follow DCP at DCP underscore live. We got a lot of stuff happening. Um, I, I'd love to tell you about all our upcoming guests, but I'm just going to serve that for later. I want to take this time to thank our patrons and the people who subscribe to this podcast. I can't tell you without, without your support, we could not do this. It, it helps to pay the wonderful people like Nick who edit the podcast and, uh, all of us who um, take part in it every week, we couldn't do it without you. And thank you so much. Thank you. Much guys. love. All right. Thank you all. Thank you guys for having me. Yep. Thanks for being right. on the show. You so See you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye, Felicia. Uh, we're going to read out some subs and then be back with some credits. All right. All right. Or I mean, credits and then mm -hmm. subs. My bad. <laughs> <laughs>